Put the cookie down! Now! Hi. Hi, how are you doing? And welcome to Small Screen Live. I hope you guys are doing very well. Um, is my camera okay? Is everything okay? Can you see me all right? Can you hear me okay? Let's just get the focus onto my face. That seems to be working brilliantly. Hi, guys. I hope you guys are all doing very well. We were off last week, but we're back now. And we've got so much to talk about. We've got the Batman. We've got Robert Pattinson. We've got what else do we have? We have DC Fandom to talk about. Uh, we've got Batgirl to talk about. We've got Letitia Wright to talk about. We've got No Time to Die. Tom Hardy potentially playing Bond. Uh, got we're going to be talking about other things probably as well. Things that we've watched as well. There's so much stuff to talk about. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, wow. Yes, and of course, James is back as well. It's nice having James back, isn't it? Uh, I wanted to say what? <laughs> I wanted to say hello to everyone in the chat. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, who do we have in the chat? We have uh, if James is yes, Jedi Master EJ saying hello there. Hello there. He he queued that one up brilliantly. Well done, James. Uh, and we've got Sean Harrigan, Sean Harrigan in the chat saying, greetings and salutations. Greetings to you, Sean. I hope you're doing very well. Yeah. Uh, who else do we have in the chat? We have, we have Bobby, Bobby Anderson saying, hello, everyone. Hope all are well. Bobby. Yes, I hope you're well, too. And who else do we have in the chat? Uh, yeah, Jedi Master EJ is in the chat and Geek Studios is in the chat saying hi. Uh, yeah, go and follow actually Geek Studios over on Instagram. Uh, they've got a really good uh, Instagram page. Uh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and then we also have Kazakhs in the chat and uh, Kazakhs just laughing emoji. Kazakhs just spends his whole life laughing, doesn't he? Uh, we all. Mm. We have Chrysla in the chat saying, dropping in to leave a quick like before I go to Tech Friday night. Uh, in JK, JKD in New York. Catch you on the replay, guys. Thank you very much, Chrysla, and I hope you have a nice time. I was going to say, go to teach a bit before I go teach Friday night. J, JKD, what, what is that? What is it? Wow. Hmm. I'm not sure what that stands for. I'm pretty sure James knows what that stands for. Is it is it a martial art, maybe? Hmm. Well, hope you have a very good Friday night. On Friday night, I'm doing this. Yeah, teaching Jeet Kune Do. Uh, I thought, I I thought it might be a martial art. Yeah. And who else do we have in the chat? We have... Uh, <laughs> uh, Jeet Kune Do, says uh, Chrysler. So, yeah, well... Very, very have fun doing that. I just play football tonight, so I'm a bit knackered. Uh, we've also got Clint in the chat, and he's also waiting. He's 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 very, very eager to come on today because it's been two weeks that he hasn't got to talk with us about. So he is ready to go, and here he is. How are you, Clint? Hey, hey, how's it going, man? I'm doing great. <laughs> are you are you are you raring to go? You just want to talk pop culture because it's I've been, been a sitting. Week. Yeah, I've been sitting here for two weeks. I've just been waiting. <laughs> I've been to the bathroom in 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 ages. Sorry, okay. too, too much information. Sorry about that. Probably, probably. It's okay. I've uh, got a, a bottle. Before you go, go, you know, go into all of that. Uh, the, we got, we got some, we got some more people that just joined the chat. We've got uh, spooky, spooky bats. Says, "Hey, small screen squad." That's a difficult one. Just try and say small screen squad. Quickly, hey, hey, small screen squad, small screen squad, small screen squad, small screen yeah, squad. Can, of course, you can do it. Uh, New York. <laughs> oh, man. We, we've got uh, Castellos away. Says, "Hey, hi, Edward. Hi, um, Castellos. I hope you're doing very well." I've also got Steve Kazan in the chat, and he says, "How do you do, fellow kids? We're very good." Steve moment. Kazan for well. Silver Surfer or. James is back to his old tricks again, cutting himself off mid sentence. Uh, yeah, I, ho I hope you guys are doing well. It's been a while. It's been a while. We we decided not to do a show last week for reasons, um, uh, and um, I'm not sure what we're going to do next week either because uh, 
uh, yeah, I suppose this is a bit of an announcement, not really, but small screen's going to be at um, MCM Comic Con in London. So that I th maybe Clint, you and James are going to have to do a solo show on Friday, but we're going to be uh, posting a lot of content from Comic Con in in London. It's going to be uh, a lot of fun, and I'm very very wow. Wow. Yeah, that, that was a little announcement, getting that out of the way quickly. But should we just move on straight on to the Batman? And um, there's been quite a few teasers for the Batman. Uh, there's been, so we've got Matt Reeves. Te like, I want to know what you guys watched the last two weeks. Oh, do you want to do that first? Yeah, that's a good. Intro. All right, all right. Let's way. let's get let's no? okay. Let's get that. Let's get that into. What have you watched in the last two weeks, Clint? Just locked up in that room of yours with the drum kit behind you. Oh yeah. Um, um, I just watched. I went through all of the small screen videos and I just watched them all. <laughs> um, no, I was. Uh, I watched. Um, I went back. You know, and for those who don't know, I've I do an, another show called Versus. And it's a little bit of nostalgia, and we'll do stuff. We might do the original Halloween versus the new one next week, or something. We're actually mm. going to do the the the. Uh, we're going to compare a couple of the Halloweens next week. But um, we did uh, Lost Boys, which I hadn't seen in years, versus Werewolves. Uh, no, that wouldn't. That was the week before. Uh, we did what? <laughs> didn't stay what, long. <laughs> yeah, we did what we do in the shadows, which I hadn't seen. Mm. Which I'm like, why didn't I get the memo that that's like one of the greatest mockumentaries ever in the history of of cinema um i had i heard it was good but holy smokes i loved it and then uh also uh watched uh, uh werewolves within which is a new uh film that came out i think in 2021 uh it, it it's got milana vetrub who is a uh, lily from the at&t commercials and there's she's got a cult following of of uh followers that love her she's gorgeous and uh uh and quirky and fun uh, and then Sam Richardson, who is one of the guys in Tomorrow War, who's who is really good, and it's it's a mm. fun movie. Uh, Werewolves Within. If you're looking for something funny and quirky, uh, really fast, subtle humor uh, with really interesting characters, it's a ridiculous movie. But uh, if you're looking for something Halloweeny to uh, to watch, that's that's the thing to watch. That sounds good because I've got um, a tra a train ride. It's going to be like a two hour and a half train journey, so maybe something like that it, would it's, be quite good to watch. It's you're not going to watch the long goodbye. Jeez. Well, you did. Okay, James. First off, you didn't want me to watch it on my tablet, so so I can't. You know, I, I, you specifically told me to watch That's it in the true. cinema. That's <laughs> well on your couch in front of your big screen. Yeah. Well, I don't it's have Robert a big Altman. screen. Well, I'm in uh, front yeah. of your TV, not a small little tablet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but, the, uh, or watch yeah. it in your hotel room when you're done that Comic Con. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. If you're looking for something funny, it's definitely definitely something good to watch. It's 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 just silly characters like uh like the Reno 911 guys, you know, you'll see them yeah. and it's yeah. like I even mentioned that, that this cast, I hope I see the whole cast doing something completely different. Sometimes you get good chemistry with different people. These people are all ridiculous and it's a it's a fun fun ride, so. And and you you liked what we do what we did in the, what we do in the shadows didn't you? I yeah. loved it. I loved it. Yeah. Uh, and you know I'm a huge uh, Spinal Tap fan from back in the day. I, yeah. I love that movie. And uh, and this it's it's ridiculous like that. It's Taika Waititi. Um, it's uh, Taika Waititi. Uh, Taika Waititi and Jermaine from uh, from uh, uh, Jermaine Clement from Flight of the Concord. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean it, they're both geniuses. They're hilarious. Mm. And I should have seen this when it came out. You know what I mean? So now I have to go watch the series because I really had a lot of fun with that too yeah i haven't i haven't watched the series but i've heard good things about mm -hmm. it i'll it's definitely matt, it's got matt berry in it so i want to watch it just for that really i'm a massive matt berry fan it's as a you brilliant know, show probably. the third season is getting really really good God, i'm yeah. excited I definitely recommend it i i but knew he's... two minutes in I, into the movie i was like oh no man this is going to be good i knew immediately yeah it, it's a really, it's a really, really good movie, and um, I, I'm forgetting the name of the third actor that's in the one of the vampires that's in the the mockumentary. The actor, I can't remember his name. But, I had it um, in my note. <laughs> yeah, he, it's 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 just something. I remember I watched it at the cinema, and I remember I, I was a massive flight. I am a massive flight of the Concords fan anyway, so I knew Jermaine Clement from before, and I, I'd known that Taika um, Watiti had directed some of the episodes of that. He also was it? What was the film he directed? He, I think he directed something before that with Jermaine Clement, and it was Eagle versus Shark, yeah, or, or, or something, something like that, which, which I also really, really liked. And um, yeah, if you 
if you, you talk, like you're Watiti's talking about jonathan uh, bro yes that's that's his name but if, if you like with tt's kind of weird sense of humor uh, if you like like Thor Ragnarok or something like that, um, you probably will like what we do in the shadows. I just love, I love the Reese Darby moment when he goes, guys, what do we say? We're werewolves, not swearwolves. <laughs> it's <laughs> such a good line. It's, there's so many good lines in that movie. It's, it's no no and, spoilers, but in season three, they um, the werewolves they say, uh, uh, make sure to take your deworming medicine. <laughs> and then they do a rhyme like that about their heart. It's, yeah, the series really carries on that humor for sure. Uh, we got yeah. uh, Danzig in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, so Danzig. Danzig. I hope you're doing well. We've had quite a few new people. Cor yeah, Corey's, Corey Batten's in the, in the chat as well, as is uh, JLS Comics. Now, JLS Comics, what does J is JLS, what does that stand for? Is it Justice League? No, something I... Because JLS in England is is a is a boy band, but <laughs> so I'm pretty sure it's not comics about them. But uh, yeah, uh, let me know what what your what your initials stand for. I think the but, J uh, stands yeah. for Jesse. Jesse, okay. Yes. yes. Yeah. But uh, so you you've you've watched quite a lot, Clint. What about you, uh, James? What have yeah. you watched? I watched Cop Shop last night. Cop yeah. Shop, the new yeah. Joe Carnahan film. And uh, it was it was great. It reminded me a lot of um, uh, what was that uh, film, the John Carpenter film? How come I can't think of it now? It was like state uh, police. They were stuck in a police station. Uh, assault, uh, assault on precinct assault on thirteen. Precinct 13 yeah. Um, yeah, reminded really me a little bit film. of that. <clears throat> and um, the, the the remake of that movie is terrible. The, oh, the original is brilliant. Yeah. Ethan Hawke's in the remake, but yeah, yeah. Isn't Lawrence Fishburne too? May, maybe, yeah. yeah. Well, that's another kind of cop movie they were both in. But, um, yeah, that was, it was really good. It was nice to see that they're still making movies like that. A very nice 70s feel to it. Um, mm. And, uh, yeah, Joe, Joe Carnahan. Joe Carnahan's, like, yeah. He's underrated. He's, he's He very, really is. Like, when his films come out, it should be as celebrated as a Tarantino film, you know? So, But I don't think he gets along well with the studio heads that much. And well, that's why I think... They, uh, because he did the A team, didn't he? And that, and he didn't. I don't think he liked that. Because um, I mean, one of the one of the films that he did that I really like is The Gray. Mm -hmm. So he directed the, the Gray with Liam Neeson. I asked like Liam Neeson's best movie ever. Like, and that, and I mean, I mean, maybe you're going to put in Schindler's List in there or something else. But honestly, I really, really love The Gray, and I, I love Joe, Joe Carnahan is someone that tends to be attached to a lot of projects, like big, big projects, but never. You know, they always end up replacing him. So I mm -hmm. wonder if it's got something to do with that. He doesn't get on well with studios. Yeah, he's, he's, I think he's got a thing. particular vision. I mean, um, like mm. Smoke and Aces was great. Um, I couldn't so even yeah. tell that was uh, Chris Pine playing that role when I first watched it. It was mm. absolutely brilliant and uh, absolutely brilliant. And then um, there was another <laughs> there was another one uh, that he did that I really liked. Uh, came out after Smoke and Aces. How come I can't remember it now? But um, yeah, no, Joe, Joe Carnahan's a great director. He was going to do the Bad Boys film, and I'm glad he didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. See, what, what it he's, looks like now attached, is... He's been attached to a lot of projects. Yeah, after I think after he did um, Boss Level hey, with Mel Gibson yeah, and Frank Grillo, him and Frank Grillo made their own production company. So Cop Shop was made by, uh, produced by Carnahan and Frank Grillo, and then um, uh, Gerard Butler and another guy on his underneath his banner. So and it was written by a Canadian, so that's very cool. <laughs> um, and he'll be coming on the show actually in a couple weeks. And awesome. uh, cool. I watched Robert Altman's The Long Goodbye, uh, based yeah, on the Philip the Philip Mar Marlowe series. Uh, Elliot Gould plays a brilliant character it's set in the seventies. I highly implore anyone to go and watch it. Uh, and what else did I watch? I caught up on Doom Patrol. Uh, let's see, uh, the last two episodes. So yeah, Kazakhs. Go watch Doom Patrol. You need to start watching that. Every episode is brilliant. Are you caught up, Clint? I'm not completely current. I had to. I okay. had to finish watching Titans, and then uh, and now I'll. Uh, I will, uh, screw Titans. Titans is crap. I'm sorry. Whatever, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm, I don't I'm know. I'm so behind on all these shows. <laughs> yeah. I think that. I think that's it. Oh, uh, last week. Yeah, last week uh, I watched Goliath, the new season of Goliath. Oh. Yeah. yeah. With Billy I know, Bob you, I know you like that. 
Yeah, absolutely, Billy Bob. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I spent a good this, portion. This is, <laughs> this is really getting into everyone now. My, 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, small screen, absolutely brilliant. That's the. We've got, the, to, we've the got to get that on a poster. Yeah. We've got to get that on a poster for a movie. <laughs> Seriously, um, that once we do that, then we'll be fine. We'll be like, yeah, yeah. we got absolutely brilliant out there. <laughs> I I spent a pr pretty good chunk of my week uh, finishing up uh, Squid Game. Squid that was, Game, yeah. Right. Squid Have Game. You watched that, Edward? You watched that, right, Edward? Have you seen that yet, Edward? I love it. I, yeah, I really, me too. Really like I really, I, I watched it. I binge watched it this week. That was like the big thing that I watched this week. I spent a lot of time watching that show. And I have to say, 111 million people have watched that show so far, according to Netflix. It's the biggest, it's the, it's like a worldwide sensation, that show. It's, it's beaten Bridgerton. It's like Netflix's number one original of all time. Crazy that it's like literally, uh, it's, I wouldn't really. People call it horror. I wouldn't call it horror. I, I, I think it's more kind of psychological thriller area. But that and in Korean, <laughs> and it's doing so well. I love it. And people have, of course, talked about it and been like, you know, there's been these allegations of plagiarism with a Japanese movie that came out. I think in 2014, people saying it's very similar. But guys, this sort of thing's been around for. Forever. Years, it's like Battle Royale was probably the yeah. first one, and then that you got was my Hunger question Games. is how many people went and watched Battle Royale after they watched Squid yeah. Games, right? And Squid Game, I actually think Squid Game is an even better like um, take on because the whole thing is like a, it, it's it's a criticism of um, capitalism. Sorry, I, I said that word weirdly. Then capitalism is like that. Each character represents an issue that the the Huang, I can't re remember his full name, the creator and director has with capitalism and like things that go wrong. Each person has some sort of very specific um, thing that happened in their life that put them in this air of this this situation. So it's a critique of capitalism and which all these all these projects are all you know battle royale the hunger games um alice in borderland is very similar as well you know and and, and it's it's odd that it tends to come out of asian like creators more apart from the hunger games but then again the hunger games is literally like battle royale for kids mm. yeah literally it's, it's, it's exactly the same that so um yeah, it's it's not it's not plagiarized. It's just an idea that's been. It's it's like saying every slasher movie is plagiarized. It's it's just a, it's now a, a it's a genre on its own, you know. And I and I and I think it's really really good. Netflix and season two is coming, um, so I'm pretty sure uh, they're really loving this show. Yeah, I've really really enjoyed it. I, I get one. Yeah, I su man, I super enjoyed it. I really like all the characters in this show, and that's the thing that for me that yeah. that was really, really hit at home was the characters and being able to put yourself in their positions. And when it's a life or death situation, how uh, how far someone is willing to go. And I don't know, I don't know, uh, I don't know if this would be a spoiler or not. Well, I think literally 111 million people have watched it. Okay, so. <laughs> I'll just say, I'll just say, if you haven't seen it, then put your fingers in your ears for about 10 seconds. But uh, I, I think it, in the beginning, how it starts out, where it almost looks like they're victims because they didn't know what they were getting into, and it's almost like they're there involuntarily. But when people go back for the money, then all of a sudden they're voluntarily there. It changes yeah. the vibe completely. It goes from people just getting, just getting horrifically. Uh, killed to all of a sudden it's like you're not you don't even flinch anymore like yeah. in the beginning they're like oh my god and then all of a sudden it's like oh yeah another dead person boom and no big deal and I, I think i think that's really interesting that when you're like hey somebody's greedy and if they get what they get it, that's okay but if somebody's there uh got tricked <clears throat> into being in this situation that's that's terrible but it, it's kind of it's funny it flips a little switch in your brain and i just liked all the characters i thought i thought it was cool I completely agree with you. And the characters, um, especially the main one, Ji Hun, I think his name is. Mm -hmm. uh, he goes through um, his his arc is really, really like well developed, and then his fr his his childhood friend as well. He literally turns and he is literally the villain at the end. And 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 I have to say that the and the ending is. Um, I mean, I did see it coming, 
but it, it did it, it did pack a punch and i really really did like it and um i i think each that that's the what you just said that's the biggest like difference between this and all the other um projects and you know movies and tv shows that we've mentioned before is that they they end up being there voluntarily but the reason they're there is because of the system they live in uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it literally they they have they feel like they don't have any other choice and um honestly like i i haven't watched anything this year that's like affected me so much i've watched the first episode again and i think i'm going to watch it again like that the whole season uh, i think it's that good and um, you haven't watched pig yet though pig no uh, yeah i haven't watched that yet no but um i just was really a I don't. I, I was kind of profoundly affected by this show. I thought it was some. Uh, maybe it's just my love of like Asian cinema and like, and I just find it very, very fascinating. What do you there's, say there's it's like absolutely idea, brilliant. It, you, you know what it is? It's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> what's absolutely What's interesting? Brilliant. What's interesting though too is that you know they're in a situation they put themselves in and they're like this is this money is going to fix everything. I've got all these yeah. problems going yeah. on in my real life, but after a while of going through this stuff together, they make choices that are like you know what I'm going to do the right thing because it's right. And after a mm. while, the money doesn't matter because the challenges and getting past all these obstacles pulls them together or puts things in a perspective. And then they do what they think is right as opposed yeah. to just doing what's what's best for their wallet and it's yeah. uh it's crazy it's it's really cool and it, it, it got me thinking you know I'd, I'd watch a couple of episodes take a break i didn't watch it all in one day and no. and uh, i caught myself thinking about hey maybe this and this and this and just just thinking about the move or the show uh when i wasn't watching so that's pretty cool anything that you take with you throughout the day it's it's a uh, it's it's doing a good job mm. and i and i have that that um that what's it the uh is it green light red light the song in my head <laughs> and um one thing i will say if you are going to watch it please do watch it in korean with i mean i watched a bit of it dubbed and it is terrible <laughs> it's really we, bad dub. we had this discussion on clint's show uh, yes yeah. was it last week yeah, yeah. And I, I i watched like the first like four minutes of it dubbed to see what the voice was yeah. and then i switched over to korean and and I, maybe i'm a subtitle snob or whatever but i watch everything with subtitles even like uh english speaking movies because i don't, mm. don't want to miss some of the dialogue i end up rewinding yeah. quite a bit but yeah you have to like if you listen to the voice in the first five minutes to the narrator's voice and then you go to korean you're like it's so much more, like why wouldn't you want to listen to that awesome yeah. accent anyways it's so badass yeah Right. Well, the, the the other problem with it is it is badly translated as well. So um, the when you're reading the subtitles, apparently, I don't know what they did, but they they it, the, um, there was this whole video about it. Like you actually don't quite. It's just the translation has been kind of messed up, which is a shame. Well, what it is is it's they've. What, are you talking about the dubbed or the subtitles? The subtitles. Okay, so the subtitles, A, they, they take out a lot of cultural references and yeah. lifestyle references yeah. from the Korean life, and um, they have to make it fit in that a lot of time, too. But mm. it, I did hear that they uh, the subtitles are better than the dub, but they were still atrocious. So. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say uh, I've got a whole video about it where we had this conversation. Mm -hmm. James is in the video, and yeah. I edited it down to an, a concise uh, a concise, more concise, because we talked about it for over an hour. But it, it, what James said is right. It's like um, they have to, they have right. to, uh, they have to. F your mouth's moving. You only got so much time before it cuts to the next shot. So, yeah. so if you have something that 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 says, "Hey." May your travels be safe and the sun always shine on you uh, as you <laughs> travel in a rain free uh, situation uh, is the direct translation. But you only but it goes by really fast. You're going to say, hey, I hope you have a good weather. And that's <laughs> yeah. what it's going to be. You're not going to get all that information. And then there's also, like you said, cultural things. And I talked about that yeah. in, in the video. There's a phrase in Spanish that means that's que pedo. And that 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 literally translates to what fart. <laughs> but 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 if you're if you say that to somebody in Mexico, that just means like, hey, what's up? You know what I mean? So I've heard you, this before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, get better. Or you or if somebody says, hey, uh, if somebody says, oh, that's a bunch of BS, like that's belong, it's 
not true. You could say, ah, puro pedo. That's pure fart. That doesn't mean <laughs> literally that. So when you're dealing with different languages, you have, exp yeah. <laughs> you're dealing with certain phrases and words that they have in Korea that we don't have here or that would not directly translate. So they got to make sure certain, yeah. certain uh, concessions for that. But um, I'm a, I'm a pro overdubs guy. I'm like, like I had an argument. Well, it wasn't even an argument. It was a friendly discussion in the comments, that video. And they were like, you know, well, certain people, they're like, just think about Mah McConaughey in Wolf of Wall Street. And, and like, they have this intense thing where they're, where they've got all this brilliant dialogue and, and, you know, and, and they put all this work acting this out and you're going to miss it with a weird overdub that sounds wrong that it's falsely translated. And I go by the same token, these guys said something. These guys say say what they say, but they're making facial expressions and gestures with their face, and you could read it in their eyes because of all the acting they did. And you're missing out on that if you're reading the words at the bottom of the screen and not looking at the at the characters. So there's a give and take. And like James said, that there, there was a um, there was a lot of falsely uh, translated uh, like subtitles too because they don't mm. have the space or the time to uh to to put those in so either way you got, you're making concessions uh the best way to enjoy the movie is learn korean and watch it in korean with your new <laughs> understanding of the language <laughs> good like, like the actor the, the indian actor that's in it um he moved to yeah. south korea to learn how to act <laughs> Steve has a good point. If you've seen animes and used to used to foreign dub films, and this dub issue has been there for a long time, a few good dub ones like yeah. Princess Mononoke. Yeah, this is it's always been a big issue. Like, and that's why yeah. I, I can't. I I don't know. I can't watch a film dub to be honest with you. Like, I'd rather have the uh, uh, I'll absolutely watch it if I have to. But like, I've been looking for um like a good version of Flashpoint. Donnie Yen, uh, directed by Wilson Yip, the same guys that uh, directed It Man. And then uh, uh, SPL, which is called Kill Zone in the States, that too. Mm. It's so hard to find um, one that's not dubbed online. You know Dude, what I, I mean? Like I, to go rent or anything. Netflix has really, like, really thrown down some money and really put a lot of effort to translate their stuff into like 30 different languages. Oh, and, yeah. The and new shows for sure. It, but I'm talking about like the old, like the, the older movies and the older shows. Oh, yeah. The old yeah, is, gar yeah. is garbage. Like, try, and, try and find a good version of Hard Boiled. That's that's subtitled. You can't unless you watch it on YouTube. Yeah, right? mm -hmm. I don't even know if that's uh, still up. And same with um, uh, Battle Royale. Like you, if you yeah, watch that's the, true. The, yeah, the, the director's cut, it's still dubbed, and you can't, you know. Yeah. And what really bothers me, I'm watching stuff on Amazon. Like I was trying to watch Narc last night after I watched Cop Shop, and I rented it, and the only subtitles on is in in uh, Spanish. So. And it's like late at night, I can't, and the volume keeps going up and down, up and down, soft and quiet. So I'm trying to, and I'm just like, ah, oh, just forget it. I'll watch it sometime this weekend. You know, <laughs> like at least have English subtitles. So, yeah, I'm, I will, I, I will say, as far as dubs, uh, dub like things are concerned, I, I will say that actually a lot of the Studio Ghibli films are very well dubbed. Yeah, um, and they, they tend to get in, they tend to get in big name actors to do like, well, they put a big Bale budget one, behind yeah. it. Yeah. Right, they it, yeah, want it's to represent it's, it's it's Disney. It, yeah, it's behind the behind the English that. dubbing is. is I, I I will say I tend to I do tend to watch anime dubbed, uh, but not live action. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't, don't don't know why that is, but um, yeah, that's something that I've all, I've always done. I've, I think just because I started watching Studio Ghibli films when I was very young, and it was um, all all in English, mm -hmm. so I just kept on watching. And that was my kind of introduction to like. Japanese cinema and then I went from there on then I went to like uh, Full Metal Alchemist and and I watched yeah. that dubbed and um and, and you know and then like uh, what was the other? Death Note as well actually Death Note I watched in Japanese and then I watched it in English and then they took it off Netflix so I never actually finished <laughs> Death Note which I was really pissed off about I, w I watched but, Dragon Ball Z the Cell Saga in I, uh, I watched in it dubbed um, uh, English, but like yeah, Dragon Ball Z. in if I watch Naruto, I have to watch it with subtitles because that actor's voice who plays Naruto in the dub version is so annoying. It's just like a really screamy kid. Um, yeah, but yeah, my introduction was, was Akira, right? And I watched yeah. that dub first, and then I watched subtitled, and then uh, Samurai Pizza Cats. You know, and you know yeah. all that stuff. It just so. depends. It depends on what you can get when you're young. Like when you're younger, it's like you kind of just bought a DVD. And I mean, I've watched. A lot of Studio Ghibli films dubbed into French as well, so you know it's mm -hmm. like 
because I, was, exactly. I grew up in France. Uh, actually, one of the best places for dubbing things apparently is Italy. That they, they they really like, and and I and I actually got an experience of this when I was out there because the Simpsons is on all the time on Italian right. TV. And I will say the guys they got to dub that into Italian sound exactly like the English actors. It's actually quite spooky. And then I watched Family Guy in Italian, and it's exactly the same. So I think that they do um, they do a very good job. They dub everything down there, which you know, awesome. It's just it's just, uh, uh, just the way they go. Do you see Fandom? Yeah. Well, actually, I oh, didn't is get this to. Where I'm supposed to say what is all this about? And he says, uh, "Shut up! I asked the question." Yeah. God, Elliot Gould was so good looking. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say dark. Dark is really well dubbed, which is another Netflix mm. series. I, I didn't even yeah, realize yeah. it was dubbed at first. Um, I was also gonna say Lupin. Is, Lup, Lupin is uh, was really well dubbed. Do you want another uh, go at that one? <laughs> Lupin. I, I I don't know how to say it. How do you say that one? Give it. Give it to me. Lupin. Lupin. Lupin yeah. was very Lupin, well dubbed yeah. too. Yeah. Um, and I think it's. You pretty, tried watching I, it dubbed. I, I, I think no. I think it's pretty cool that that they're putting so much effort, and I think it's really uh, impressive that their business uh, strategy of hitting an international market has has really it's, hit a, yeah, touch, a touchdown because they're like, hey, all this effort. I heard I heard about all this stuff months ago, and now I'm seeing that they have the the biggest successful yeah. series I've ever done. It's pretty cool. Well, what's interesting there is I've noticed that apparently Squid Game didn't enter enter into Nielsen's charts of like the highest, the best performing things in the US so I do wonder whether these numbers are literally just everything outside of the United States so I think this is I think we're going to start seeing Netflix do this more and just specifically target non-US audiences because let's be honest like well in the US I think you and and like um not you what was the other one uh Lucifer was the highest the, the most streamed show in of the last month and it's like that's nowhere else in the world is that really as big as Squid Game's been, so it's gonna be. It's gonna be. I, I think you're right. They're, they're really pushing. They're pushing their international content really, really like hard. Like they've had Money Heist that's done really well. They've had Lupin mm. that's done really well. They've had Squid Game that's, that's done really well. Alice in Borderland actually did really well as well when that came out. That's a re really good show. Um, There's a lot of good so, Korean shows too that we watched like yeah. last year. Spooky, you know. Yeah, yeah. there, there are so spooky. many more. Yeah. There's some pretty yeah. cool inter interviews with the uh, Squid Game cast. One on uh, I saw on Jimmy Fallon the other day, and it's really funny to see them uh, not in character. It's just normal yeah. people, and it, it's pretty cool. Like the the, the two main guys that they, they were, I think they were the only ones that the creator knew that he wanted them, and then the others they all cut. That they, they found the I forget her name, the North Korean um, character. They, she was a model in you in the U.S. Mm -hmm. She she was working in the U.S. But like. Incredible, really, really good Absolutely casting. Absolutely brilliant yeah. acting. Absolutely yes. brilliant acting. Yeah. Wow. I'll quick. I'll quickly go over what I watched because you didn't actually let me. So yeah, Squid Game. You did. I finished. You, you started with Squid Game. I started with Squid Game. So Squid Game. <laughs> I, fin I finished. What I finished. You say that it. we didn't ask you. It was your turn. You That's what we we spent more yeah. time on what you watched than what we spent on anything that we've watched because we, we, we all watched Squid Game. Minutes. <laughs> Talking about what you last watched, Jesus. See. <laughs> so what did you watch, Edward? <laughs> uh, the man with the golden gun, in uh, in honor of uh, No Time to Die being released. Right. I watched the cheesiest Bond movie ever made with Roger Moore. Do you want to Roger Moore? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> and um, and it's just so, watching it now. It's so bad. <laughs> It's so these Bond movies have not aged well. The only one that I would say has aged well, and actually after watching No Time to Die, it's I was the like, No, <laughs> yeah, it's the best Bond movie ever made. Um, but um, no, it's on Her Majesty's Secret Service. I've said this time and time again. I'm pretty sure people in the chat are gonna say I'm crazy. Uh no, on Her Majesty's Secret Service, okay, forget George Lazenby as bond but, yeah, but that, that's, that's not a that that's movie not a canon film is it yes it is it wasn't, yeah, was no, it produced no, by no. Eon? yes yes you're thinking of never say never again look don't, don't argue I'm with me on uh, no, that, yeah I'm, I'm the bond expert I'm asking, look i'm asking questions i'm not arguing don't get all defensive man jeez 
No, it was, take it a week was never off fake. and then you just want to bite my head off every time. Like, I'm sorry you didn't get to talk about everything you watch, but we're, we're fixing that now. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I watched The Man with the Golden Gun, which uh, it has, um, it's the one with Christopher Lee in it, uh, Scaramanga. Um, so, yeah, with a golden gun. And then I. Wow. The Man with the Third Nipple as well as Dan Zig said in the comments. And then I finished off watching uh, a true crime uh, documentary on Netflix called Sophie, which is actually really good. So if you've got time to, to if you like true crime, then I, you probably, it's only three episodes long. So yeah, I would, I would very, I would highly recommend that show. There you go. There, there you go, James. Yeah. Now you can come back. <laughs> well, he's not coming you back. You wonder why you waited so long for something so disappointing. <laughs> Fuck you, James. <laughs> is that it, Edward? Is that it? <laughs> That's it. Go That's over it. there and hit the fucking like button. All right, you. <laughs> you guys excited for Fandom? Anybody? Yeah, I'm. Pr- I'm pretty excited for Fandom. I'm gonna be honest. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing lots of Batman content. Um, I'm not. I'm. I mean, I've kind of given up a bit with some with a lot of the CW stuff. So I'm not that interested in what they've got to say about that, but yeah, I jumped off that train last year too. Yeah, yeah. I just, I mean, I know they got lots of Flash stuff that's coming and Batwoman, and but really, I can't, I could not care less. (laughs) I probably shouldn't say that, but yeah, uh, it's. uh, mm. But apart from Um, that, you got Peacemaker as well. That's going to and uh, some probably some Black Adam stuff, and that's going to be fun. Everything I saw from Black Adam looked like the, the stuff from two years ago. I was like, "Did you?" Was guys... it two? Was it two years ago? It's two years ago. Yeah, the 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 year before last was like a big deal, fandom, and then last year nothing really happened. It just quietly passed by. Yeah, they're using the same clips in the promos. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. That's, that's a, Rock's wearing the same shirt. That's two years old footage. Yeah, yeah it's the same footage, isn't it? It's where he says the DC universe is going to like this. will never be the same. same. Yeah, we've been yeah. we've been using that for for two years. Like, uh, I wasn't uh, Clint. Clint hates everything. I wasn't excited about anything. Things will never be the same because the hierarchy of power in the DC universe is about to change. Yeah. I was like, okay. So you, weren't, you you didn't you you weren't excited for anything. I'm not excited at all. This looks this <laughs> looks terrible. Like I was like, what the hell? Like a uh, peacemaker. I'm excited about that. I saw a little clip, a little promo. No uh, Batman. Batman. The Batman's gonna be great. I was like, cool. If yeah. we get an extended uh, movie trailer, then that's cool. And I loved uh, the Batman uh, thing this week. Everybody freaked out because they heard his voice. Uh, you know what I mean? It's not it's not a signal it's a warning or whatever you know everybody f- lost their mind this week about batman the uh, little thing they put out but uh, like <laughs> other than that i was like who cares i was like nothing looks good i was really disappointed i was really hoping to see something that was going to get me excited um anything uh the most exciting dc st- well i am excited to see if they they give any information about the uh, the batgirl um movie yeah thing that, that you know we're i guess we're going to talk about that that later or aren't we but the director well, you can talk about dire- that now you can talk about that if now you want to yeah yeah. yeah yeah about the directors saying that there's going to be the real batman in in it so and, and i'm like the real batman <laughs> yeah exactly it's it's uh it's it's scary i'm like i don't know who's this going to be this is, is uh the Michael director Putin? is it yeah Batman? i think it, i'm i'm is pretty it sure it's my robert Putin. pattinson well, it, it, the thing is, well, it's it's. Did you, did you read my article? <laughs> That's literally yeah. what I said in the article. I was like, "Who the yeah. fuck could this be?" George Clooney. Well, it's J.K. Yeah. J.K. Simmons is is cast as James Gordon. So it's like you got you had two choices. You got Batfleck, or you got or you got Michael Keaton because he's going to be good cool. about that. Yeah, yeah. I he's J.K. Simmons is he's is, he's cast as he's the, him and on IMDb him and Leslie Grace are the only two people cast in this movie listed as cast on this. Yeah. So now my question she, to you guys, sorry, is do you think they're going to announce this restore the Snyderverse or release the haircut on Fandom on Saturday? They could, but they're not going to let us know now. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 that's the, I think for me that's the big question is like are they going to like even acknowledge uh, like David Ayer at all? <laughs> like yeah. it'd be good if they did. 
Um, but I don't know if they will do. Uh, but the the directors of but the Batgirl movies, Abdil El Arbi and Billa F- uh, Fala, mm-hmm. and they're the, they're the guys that directed uh, the last. Um, was it the, the last uh, Jedi? No, the <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, the, the last, last bad boys, the last samurai? bad boys movie, the last the bad la- boys. <laughs> samurai. What was that called? Bad boys for life. That's bad boys for life. We right, right. go in nowhere. Okay, Kaz <laughs> says that the Badinson voice sounds lame, and I gotta say, look, I love Christian Bale's Batman, but someone should have told him to close, close his mouth <laughs> while he's on camera. He stands there he never with does. his mouth open he never does. the whole time. And Batman doesn't have his mouth open like that all the time, you know? Just looks so the, bad. The but, thing that I, I, I could never get over the whole the whole I love the Dark Knight, but that whole scene at the end when he's with when he's got uh, the Joker upside down, he's like, People are good. And it's just the way his his mouth when he says that line, it's yeah. just so like it looks like he's going to give him a kiss. He's like, yeah, the duck lips. He's got like these duck lips. No, he's got to be grimacing. And he's where are the other drugs like, going? Uh, where are they? <laughs> I love those YouTube videos with the guy that, that, that mocks that. Yeah. He is so oh, good. He's hilarious. He's he is evidence. So good. I was looking for evidence. I he's think quite I found a famous actor, evidence. isn't he? He's quite a famous actor, the guy that does that. I think he's in the next... Uh, Home, what's it? Home Sweet Home Alone, or whatever the fuck that movie's called. <laughs> home <laughs> Alone? No, there's a new one. It's literally yeah. just a remake of the first one with the kid from Jojo Rabbit. It's you know, called the, the, Still, the still Alone. <laughs> yeah, still, still Home Alone. <laughs> home Alone again. <laughs> I thought that was the next Spider Man movie. Yeah. Oh, no. Actually, about that, that, that so uh, f- apparently, like officially, well, not officially, on Wikipedia, it said that um, Macaulay Culkin is going to be back in this movie in, in Home Sweet Home Alone, whatever the fuck it's called. And then he, he just said on Twitter, he's like, No, I'm not. <laughs> it's <just> like, <laughs> I'm not in this film. <laughs> I'm just like, What is going on? I thought you were um, going to say Macaulay Culkin was going to be. Batman, <laughs> Batman, what? Uh, you know, you know what? I would, I would give Macaulay Culkin the role as the villain. That would be really cool. I, I actually think he's he's actually a much better actor than people give him credit for. He, he would play right? good anarchy. Yeah, he would. He would. He play good anarchy. <laughs> so, and if you but go yeah. watch after this, go watch uh, Macaulay Culkin. We call him Macaki Keki. Go watch Macaki <laughs> Keki on uh, Angry Video Game Nerd. A couple years ago, we did the Christmas special. It was really good. Yeah, he did like a big YouTube tour um, yeah, around that did. time, and he was like relaunching. He was, on, he, he was on Red Letter Media quite a lot as well, wasn't he? Yeah. Doing stuff there. That it was, was funny, funny, but yeah, he's not going to be in. He's apparently not going to be in Home Home Sweet Home Alone or Home Alone Sweet, home, sweet whatever. Home Alone, no way. Home. Home. <laughs> Far from home. It's it's such a terror. The, the trailer came out this week. This is why I'm talking about it. And I was mm. I was watch I watched it and I said this looks like a pile of shit, but. <laughs> <laughs> they've literally got some really good actors in it. So they've got Ellie Kemper in it. They've got the guy that does the Batman, you know, the for it was for Funny or Die, I think he did it for, it wasn't it? He, and he's really he's actually a very funny actor. They've got Pete um Holmes? Yes, Pete Holmes, that's yeah. who it is. Yeah. Um <laughs> yeah, I forgot. yeah, he had his own show, didn't he? And they got cancelled. Mm-hmm. Oh poor old Pete Holmes. But uh yeah, they've got like good actors in this. And then and then I was just like I was looking at the cast list. I was like, how the hell did they get? I suppose Disney must pay very well. But it's literally the out of everything they've done so far since the um the 20th Century Fox uh merger, this is to me the biggest cash grab. Like they've clearly made it in a week and then <laughs> and then just <laughs> came up and they were like, Who's funny? What kid's funny? Let's get that. I don't want to call him, you know, Archie Yates is his name. Let's get the the British kid in Jojo Rabbit that does the whole thing. Is like, oh, I, like, he blows, you know, he's the one that blows something up with the bazooka, and uh, he's he is quite funny in that actually. Is it Disney he looks, produced now then? Yeah, so this is a Disney produced thing, so it's coming to <laughs> Disney <you> Plus. <laughs> Rob, Rob Delaney, okay, so it's um, Ashling B, B, who's a very very good Irish actor. Uh, Rob Delaney, Chris. Chris Pennell, who's the guy that does uh, the voice in um, what's the show? Uh, Rick and Morty. He, he's the dad in Rick yeah. and Morty. He does a lot yeah. of voices. He's also on Archer. 
and it's it's just got like literally a, it's got a very good comedic cast. Uh, Keenan from Keenan and Kel and Saturday Night Live as well as in that as well. And I'm just like, God, these people have no shame <laughs> to do this. And even um, what's it? Chris, uh, I love the first Home Alone. I love the first two Home Alone films. They're like, you know, they're movies that I watch every Christmas. And, and Chris Chris Columbus, which is the dumbest name ever, but um, literally said this. <laughs> it's like, I think he said something like, "It's it's an insult to cinema that they've done this." <laughs> I just think this whole thing is hilarious. Anyway, that's my little rant about. Yeah, it's... that's whole, that's yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's so stupid. Uh, it makes you like get really angry with Disney when they do this shit. It's like just leave it be. If the only way you could do another Home Alone movie is if you got Macaulay Culkin and the original actors to come back and have Macaulay Culkin just torture them for an hour and 30 minutes <laughs> and that and that we'd be okay with that but that could just be a youtube video as well but well, we got a we got a home alone sequel with the last rambo like, that was a pretty yeah good home alone yeah movie. yeah and, and we got, that, an, we got a home like, alone one with skyfall yeah exactly yeah, yeah. We, we were talking about doing on versus talking about doing uh christmas movies like we're always putting movies up against each other and uh somehow me and curtis cb3 who was in the comments were talking and we we're like what about uh home alone and die hard i'm like that's stupid that'll never go together and then it's we both so stopped good. and we we're like die hard and home alone are the same movie same movie <laughs> holy crap and we're like this is genius so that that's happening in december but yeah it's hilarious <laughs> that's what i'm hoping haka is gonna lean on uh, heavily is the Die Hard vibes. I'm getting that from the the second trailer. Uh, yeah. Oh, that that second trailer. I love that. The vibe of it. I love. I, I'm just. I'm all in this show. Uh, this is the, probably the show I'm most excited for, actually, because I love. I genuinely love Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye. I think he's so. I think he's been like given a really kind of. I don't know. Like he's he's never really apart from Age of Ultron, where he got to do something in that film. Uh, the rest of the rest of the movie, the uh, the Marvel films he's been in, he's he's kind of been a bit forgotten. I, I mm. feel, uh, and th this to me, I think this is going to be his. Like, I'm I'm pretty sure this might be the last thing he does actually in the MCU, and then they're just going to hand it off to Haley Ste um, Steinfeld, who I think looks brilliant in this show as well. And um, what's the name of the um, his wife is going to be in it as well? The Clint Barton's wife that the. the I forgot her at the actress's name, the one that was in the Scooby Doo movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she played. Uh, uh, yeah. We got a super chat from Syl. Yes, Woo! it is. Hello, working. Sil. Hello. Yeah. Hmm. And I think I agree with everyone. Uh, is it Corey Batten in the chat says Die Hard is the best Christmas movie? I agree with that. I, I, I definitely agree with that. And, oh, is this yeah. where I'm supposed to say, what is all this about? And he says, uh, shut up, I asked the question. Yeah. <laughs> Such a good clip. Good and, yeah, the, ho the ho 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 scene in Die Hard is just brilliant. Ho ho ho. And now I have a machine gun. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> brilliant. Um, <laughs> so we just kind of went over and we got we got our stuff. first we, yeah we got our first look at uh um uh the tracksuit mafia in the hawkeye second trailer too yeah standing outside the yeah. van i was I, I was really hoping one of them would drop a bro that would have been great uh you still have time <laughs> to, to go read matt fractions run before it comes out at end of november so yeah i need to i need, I need to I need to read that oh thank you dan thank you so much it sure is What's Danzig 1979. Uh, jingle he's, all the way. He's responding to this super chat from Sil. Oh, okay, good. Uh, you missed it, yeah. 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 What's up, Sil? <clears throat> well, the, the, yeah, I suppose DC fandom. We've learned that Chris, uh, that Chris, sorry, Clint doesn't like everything. He hates DC <laughs> fandom. Mm. So <laughs> I just was uh, very lackluster. Disappointing. Yeah. Very lackluster, and but there's not, but there's nothing much for them to to really talk about what well, you've got aquaman 2 you've got which actually doesn't really seem like it's going to feature that much at all unless you know what they're going to bring amber heard on <laughs> uh -oh. and, then everyone, and then everyone's going to switch off um but <laughs> uh they've got that they they've got the flash trailer you know or like there, there, there is going to be some flash stuff. there is yeah. going to be some flash stuff 
And, we'll, but, and the um, Batman trailer, I think, is going to be. And if we get a Black Adam trailer, I'll be happy. <clears throat> the Batman, ba the Batman's going to be the biggest thing, I think, there, and, unless they announce the the air cut. But I, I highly doubt that's going to happen uh, this year's DC fandom. I think they if it's going to happen, it'll be big. Next year. Yeah, the, the, but that, that's the thing that they, they literally would have to spend almost zero money on the, and then just be like, yeah, it's coming. And then everyone would be very, very happy and say that this was the best DC fandom ever. <laughs> but, you know, um, it's not, it's not going to. Yeah, and, if, and <laughs> Curtis says, has Amber, heard, has Amber heard her British accent? That's very funny. Okay, that's, that's, that's very funny. Uh, yeah, no, it, I don't think she did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, actually, what I, I know that if, if it does feel like this is me uh, kind of uh, shitting all over Amber Heard, but I will. <laughs> Anything. Tell us Henry Cavill's going to be in, in uh, Black Adam. Like, give us something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give us but something. This is, this is the thing about this, this year's DC fandom. It does feel a bit anemic. It feels like there's not much there. And yeah, <laughs> Dan Six is our man casting. I'll be <laughs> Uh, I, I would love to see like you know Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, Gal Gadot kind of all be brought on stage. You know the the Trinity uh, together, and then yeah, not, they're not going to bring Zack <laughs> Snyder back. <laughs> but this is, Walter Hamada will, will will do the whole thing, won't he? And then if they had be... if they had Hamada come on stage, right, and then he started announcing like Aaron, uh, the Hour Man trilogy. And then, like, they had Zack Snyder come out and just deck him. I think that would be like, <laughs> huge. And then they announced the Snyderverse was happening again. Man, everyone would be happy, you know. Even even oh, the non Snyderverse yeah. fans would still be happy because they get to see like come on to get punched out by Snyder. It'd be fun. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. Appreciate. Uh, thank it. you, Corey. Thank you. I mean, it's good. I, honestly, they're they're bigging it up, aren't they? That this this. This and, DC fan, and I do think that moving forward, <clears throat> yeah, moving forward, what are you going to do, Walter? Um, the, honestly, th this to me, this this to me feels like a very pointless event. Like they could literally just release the Batman trailer, and they'd have just as much buzz for that movie as they would for this whole event. Which honestly, I think people are going to watch it for about five minutes, or just not bother, and then watch the highlights at the afterwards. Which is probably what I'm going to do, to be honest. Yeah. Hmm. I'm ex I'm excited for Peacemaker. I think it's going to be fun. Um, Peacemaker I'm excited. doesn't really grab me, to be honest, because hmm. I didn't I didn't think he was the best thing about the Suicide Squad. Me neither. But I'm like, if they if if James Gunn actually made a series about him, it's hmm. I mean, it's kind of give you something. I mean, I just told you that I finished watching. Uh, I've been watching Titans, so clearly I'm 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 down to consume garbage it's okay you know what yeah. I mean? it might be it might be it might be the mcrib <clears throat> the mcrib of hbo max series but you know i'm not i don't need a filet mignon all the time you know mm, uh, I want some McRib now. it has potential but it's just titans just the other crap episodes and or they take like come on man they start the season with hey we had some really fun adventures in san francisco working as a team okay now let's all separate our ways for the new season you know Dude, they had deaths. They went Game of Thrones with it. They killing killing main characters. They got people coming back to life. Uh, like man, yeah. they just went. They, they just went Loki. Dialogue. They went Loki with it. Like they brought people back. Yeah. So there's people coming back. I got my Donna Troy's back. I yeah, mean, what, I saw what the that hell on more? Twitter and I got spoiled. So I was like, eh. But yeah. we all knew she was coming back anyways. Yeah, that's well, why they took her body to Thamesira. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Go watch Doom Patrol. It's such a better. It deserves all the views from Titans. That's all watch them say. both. Watch both because they're both good. Th this is for you, Clint. Titans, Titans is no, no Jupiter Legacy. Uh, okay. So we found two things that you don't like. You don't like Mark Miller, and you don't like DC fandom. Wow, we're, 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 you're really growing as a. As, I don't have a problem a, with Mark character. Miller. Yeah, you say that, but you don't like any of his shows. <laughs> um dc fandom i don't know i'm excited about batgirl back like now now i'm trying really? to really 
Yeah, now that I know that there's going to oh, be Batman. No, I thought you meant Batwoman, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 Batgirl. Uh, the, like, now that I know that there's going to be Batman in it, and now that we're narrowing it down to somebody that's related in the same universe as J.K. Simmons, that 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 puts – oh, come on, guys. <laughs> that puts – that, that narrows it down. You know what I mean? Like, oh, is it going to be this person? That, that means it's Michael Keaton or Ben Affleck. Mm. I, I think it's going to be Batgirl. I think they're reference. I think they're saying the real Batman is going to be in this movie, and it's Batgirl. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't think there's going to be a Batman in it. That's 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 my. Uh, that's you don't my, think so? Mike, it'll no. be Michael Keaton or Ben Affleck. Do you think Michael Keaton would do it? Do you um, think they'll? Do you think they'll do a CGI Adam West? <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. I know I think, it's not, it's not going to be Battinson because you got Jeremy Wright's his commissioner Gordon. So if you got if you got uh, J.K. Simmons, that's that universe, you know. Yeah, I, I it's it's not going to be Robert Pattinson, and it's. I mean, <laughs> it still said that said it was the worst take ever. <laughs> I just said that to piss people off. <laughs> but uh, but no, I I, I think I, I'm I'm pretty certain that it's going to be Michael Keaton. I'm almost I'm like ninety percent sure it's going to be Michael Keaton. That that ter- that turns up in it for like a brief moment to say some word, give some words of advice. Oh, no. Yeah, mentor <laughs> mentoring role kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. So that's that that like shocked the living crap out of me, and I was, I was laughing. Uh, oh. No! <laughs> oh dear! He's gonna pop in and be like, "Here's here's my MX Black," and get and then uh, you know, go oh, buy some it. stuff. But that's the thing. It's like it, this year it seems to be mostly TV stuff that's going to be a DC fan it, It's like, first. <laughs> it's three and a half hours long. So, <laughs> what are they filling this three and a half hours up with? God, like, no. yeah, it's it's kind of it's a bit weird. Well, they yeah, have video games like, too, like Gotham Knights. Oh, yeah, Gotham, yeah. yeah, Gotham Knights. Yeah, and, and they got the Suicide like, Squad game. Yeah, and they'll probably announce a couple animated movies and maybe some animated shows, like a new mm. season of Harley Quinn, I think maybe. And, yeah. And comic books, maybe I don't know. Yeah, they'll probably I, I, do you commemorate think some some writer, get recognized with this somebody. You know, you're going to say it, they're probably going to commemorate them comic books. <laughs> they're like <laughs> DC DC comics. It was it was nice while it lasted. <laughs> I know Tom Taylor's been killing it on the DC side, but he's pretty much the only only writer I'll read of DC these days for some reason. Like he's the only good one um, with the the Superman. <clears throat> And uh, yeah. uh, um, Batman the Detective is really good. You got uh, Andy Kubert on the uh, art with that. That's really good. And then even as Indy, uh, the the Circle Seven or the the Seven something. I can't remember right now. That was really good. That's really good too. So he's just killing it. Hmm. <laughs> Bye, James. Yeah, but no, it, it is. It's very anemic. DC fandom's very anemic this year. That's why I think that mm. they have to. All right, hold on a second. All right. Hey, Leroy Kong, look. John Kent can be gay because people can uh, turn gay. You know what I mean? We don't have to talk about this. It's a comic book character. Who cares if they're they're straight, gay, or bi? It doesn't fucking matter. It's a comic book character. It shouldn't be a point of contention with people in the fan base. That's all we're going to say about it because I think the argument is stupid. Uh, comic books have always reflected the times we're in. So you can't deal with it. Just don't read it. Can, can I actually... Can, can I actually say I will say something about that, James? Because I agree with you, and but I do I do think like people when it when it comes if you if you okay, if you think about it like diversity and representation is really really important. It really is for so many years. Superhero like I hear all these people say, well, "Why do you have to bring sex into it? Why do you have to bring sexuality into it?" Well. Superheroes like comic books have done from the beginning of time. I mean, uh, Clark Kent, Lois Lane, Peter yeah. Parker, um, MJ, Batman, pff, literally every woman in you know that's like hot in 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 the Batman universe. Like literally, who has he not been with in that? You know, they're all women. Uh, and and it comes to I mean, for me, I'm I'm I can't really put myself into that situation because I'm a white straight male. But you know you've got to you've got to think about other people that 
aren't that that are you know are from other ethnicities or other sexualities they want to be represented too and that is perfectly perfectly normal that's what you want as a human being it can't just be one thing and to all those people that say that superman is gay it's not first off it's not superman it's superman's son that they and he's also bisexual he's not gay so it's, but it's even if it was thing. clark kent it wouldn't freaking matter anyways it shouldn't you know, it shouldn't matter anyway it's, it's it, they're telling stories stories yeah. about people and people can be anything they can you know they can they can be from all different walks of life and all different sexualities so i mean i, I think I, I, I can understand why people, uh, you know, the very first thing they do is go, oh, why do they need to do this? But then if you step back and really think about it, then you should understand. And if you still don't understand after that, then, uh, I mean, you're a bit lost. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. It's, it's, and this know. still says multiverse. Jim Lee said there's iteration <clears throat> of John Ken and then there are other others in addition. But you know what? Yeah. That, that shouldn't matter even if there wasn't. You know what I mean? That yeah, shouldn't, or yeah. that's like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. It's just, and, it really and, bothers and me that was... people like they'll make videos about this and get all fired up and then they'll get like a hundred thousand clicks just for the clickbait. And it's like, I mean, when Jason Todd came out as gay in the comics earlier, like people were like getting all upset about that. Yeah, I got really upset about that. Yeah. And do they, do people not realize that like you're talking about sex in the comics? Um, comic books were made for kids back in the 50s right mm. or even if, like earlier than that they've all grown up now right the audience has grown up yeah we have comics for kids but we also have comics for adults you know mm. and the, the adults are the main ones that are buying the comics these days yeah yeah it's true yeah yeah and i mean to everyone in the chat that's saying how dare you edward well you know that's just I, I that's how he's i feel joking. it's kaz he's joking yeah <laughs> he, he told me to settle <laughs> but, down uh, I, I know he's yeah but I, I, I understand. I understand. I kind of understood like the initial reaction to it. But also, I think if you if you just take a step back and just calm down a bit, then you, then you start to understand. And you know, well, no, and if there you were are reading, if there. you were reading the series, then you could tell that that's where Tom Taylor was taking us, uh, mm. Superboy, mm. right? Where he was taking yeah. him. And then I was just like, you know, like it is part of the story. It is part <laughs> of the character, and just it doesn't diminish the character at all it adds more to the story too right yeah and Tom, if there's yeah. anyone that's going to handle stuff like that and and like someone said as long as they don't ruin the character uh as long as they don't like if anyone is tom taylor is not going to ruin the key he, he's an, a writer that does it for the characters his writing is fully character based you know so if anyone can handle it, it's tom taylor and yeah tim drake jason todd you know or it's a robin so Hmm. Yeah, and then and and Spooky Bats brings up a good point about Harley and and Poison Ivy. Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy is like yeah. often depicted as a as a lesbian couple, and then people don't seem to care. You know, don't seem to have a problem with that. So it's like it's just a bit weird what people get upset about. And also, I'm pretty sure that a lot of the people that got upset about this on the internet didn't haven't actually been reading the comic book series. Uh, I will be honest, I haven't read it, so, you know, but as far as this is more like people reacting to superheroes being like depicted in a different as a different sexuality as they have traditionally been. And honestly, I, I don't have a problem with it. You can make Peter Parker, a version of Peter Parker gay in, in, in a comic book strip if it serves the story and if it's, put, you know, if, if it makes sense, you know, it would, it, it, I mean, it, it would make sense anyway, you know, it's, it's a different character just in a different story. That's, that's what's great about comic books. You can kind of do whatever you want with them. They're stories. Um, Look, I mean, my cousin using Brian, a character, a name. The reason why I have this Batman t-shirt and these Batmans behind me and I, my comic book collection, I'm in the film and all that stuff, is because my cousin Brian, when I was a kid, he was like 15 years older than me, and he introduced me to comic books, and he was a comic book collector. And it took him 20 years, 25 years, to come out as gay because it wasn't accepted back in the 80s and 90s. Now imagine if yeah. he had his representation in the comic books growing up, how how less, how many years less he would have had anxiety attacks, he wouldn't have been afraid to come out in that, in that society back then, he wouldn't have waited till he was in his 20s, you know? Like this is mm. a good thing. And then you have people that are like, <sighs> and then you have people like these comments, I'm sorry, DC and Superman are ruined by the SJW. 
that Leroy, you got it. Your I'm sorry, but your perspective is wrong. You got to look at it from like what I just say about my cousin. If he had that representation, if he said, "Oh, that it's it's a form of acceptance in society," you know, mm -hmm. he his life would have been a lot. He would have had a lot less hardships in his life, you know. And yeah. He's a great man. Yeah. He's a great guy. And I I always joke and like, "Oh, you're the one that ruined me by getting me into comic books." But I would I wouldn't be who I am today if he didn't if he didn't get me into that, you know. Mm. So and I wish he did have that representation when he was collecting comic books growing up. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean it, it's it's completely true. It's like we we we've moved on as a society that it actually in the UK it was illegal to be gay up until relatively recently, actually, as far as wow. you know, if you're looking at you, you, yeah, you literally put in prison. And um, what was his face was um, uh, was it Alan Turing was, it, was it his name was uh, chemically castrated because he was gay mm. and that was something wow. that happened quite a lot in the United Kingdom. So you know it, it's it's something you you're not really thinking about the bigger picture. I think that's the no. problem. And um, and you, you're more thinking about it, it like, oh, this this doesn't need to be in my comic books. This doesn't need to be in my like what I enjoy. Uh, but the thing is, it's not just about you. It's that's, about the world, and it's about so many different people. That's what I was gonna say. Is a lot of people don't realize that they're not the demographic anymore, and I think that upsets yeah. them. You know, it's like when a new yeah. Star Wars films come out, like the forty year olds, fifty year olds don't like it, but it's they're not the demographic. Right, the demographic yeah. is the young kids and the teenagers. Uh, Which, I did want to say, Reese says, I hope John doesn't end up like Midnight or Apollo, where he's a great character but not well known. This is, it's true. I love Midnighter and I love Apollo uh, from the Authority. I think they're great freaking characters. But in Superman and Authority right now, the way Grant Morrison is writing them is writing them absolutely horrible and making them like tokens, and uh, I, mm. I don't like that. The, uh, Warren Ellis mm. and even Ed Brubaker, they really fleshed out those characters and they're really, really great characters. So uh, I hope it get Grant Morrison actually gets better on, upon the series. It's only a mini series. So. Mm. Yeah, Reese, yeah. you're correct. It's really easy to take the take the stance of like, hey, uh, like Daniel Craig and be like, hey, why do you have to change my character, this character? Why can't you create new exciting characters for whatever demographic? But when you sit down and think about I was thinking about it this the other day and it was like I was I was like, you know, I'm a half a half white, uh, you know, straight male. And I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, well, man, like the majority of these characters who are the heroes and you know because i heard somebody say white savior or in a in a video or something i was watching and i'm like well yeah yeah i guess it, it it's easy for me because i look like a white guy uh, i was like it's easy for me to 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 listen to daniel craig say that and say yeah why don't they create new characters for other demographics but i'm like it's easy for me, but I was like, you got Superman and Aquaman and Batman and 007 and every other superhero that it's like uh, that that has been the main character mm. of every story that the majority of the world has seen forever. And I was like, of course, I was like somebody from a different uh, minority group or different uh, social group or whatever sexual group it, is going to feel that way. They're like, they've had to consume this content. Sorry for calling it content uh, their whole lives and haven't complained. They're just like, Hey, I like Batman. But when all of a sudden it's like, we're living in the future now and people are like, Hey, we could have a gay Batman. We can have, and they're like, yeah, that would be awesome because I've supported the regular, like regular is the wrong way to phrase it, but the, the or, original Batman for all these years or Superman yeah. or whatever it is. So that like got me <clears throat> thinking, cause I've, cause I've, I've had a lot of things. Um, I also feel like sometimes it gets, uh, it can feel like it's getting shoveled down your throat. It like, mm. like a lot of the CW shows, all, all of a sudden they put a character in every one of their series is that fits into these groups. And it could almost feel like, like, like a token. A checklist. It, a yeah. Like, like That's it's a amazing. checklist. And, and yeah. I was like, I was like, they gotta be careful, like make it feel organic. Cause I have, gay friends at work i have gay friends of mine that i that, you know go out and drink beer with and it you know that's normal life but like if you like got to make a team and you just have to shoehorn somebody yeah. into every it's tv show all of a sudden it looks like wallpaper at mcdonald's to where you have you have a group of people at a table at mcdonald's on the wallpaper and it's every single uh ethnicity Race yeah breeze. all together yeah. i'm like that's not accurate like you're not yeah. gonna go into mcdonald's you know and and I, but it and, happens with every 
with every representation. Yeah. Like when they start to, uh, to when it starts to come into mainstream society, yeah. right? And they start to bring that. It it is flooded at first, and then they find an even keel, and then trying out. And uh, what what, what? Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say what the human nature is, though. When you start feeling like that, you there's a there's a natural tendency to want to push back and be like, "No, you're not going to spoon feed this down my throat." And that's what happens. But it what's sad is that that uh, you end up with resistance like that when really people are just trying to do the right thing and trying to include mm -hmm. people and all of that. So it's like I think I think we just need to everybody needs to relax a little bit. And yeah. like you said, they're just stories. And these are, these are characters and, and think about it like that. Like what if your whole life, uh, you were of a, a not white straight male ethnicity and, and every character that is the mainstream character out there, popular thing has been from a different, uh, a different demographic than what you're in. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, do you know why that is? Do you know why all mainstream characters and all that stuff because, are white? Because they're the ones who've been in control of of, because of, the media, of everything. Yeah, they're built. They're built yep. from a society where where uh, the 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 white society has come and and taken the land and pushed all the other races aside. Say, hey, this is our society. Happy Thanksgiving, Canada. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, and so there you go. So I I think everybody needs to relax and quit getting getting all fired up about about things like that. It's like like you yeah. said, they're characters. And we're at a point now to where you should be used to it. It's not a surprise. Like, hey, they make this character, you know, whatever demographic. You shouldn't you shouldn't be surprised. It's just like, OK, mm -hmm. cool. Uh, if you don't want to see that, then don't see it, you mm -hmm. know, and then go go see what go see the one you do want to see. Yeah. You brought up a very interesting point, though, and I think a lot of people have been saying this in the chat, and it's uh, Kazakhs, for instance, saying nothing wrong with representation, but let's be careful celebrating manipulative tactics like tokenism and corporate va uh, virtue signaling. There, there is an element of that that I actually do agree with, that um, corporations d use this to their advantage and kind of try and gain brownie points. And I think actually DC has been doing that. Um, mm -hmm. The CW does it in all of their shows. Oh, bad. Like and and it, to to the point where it doesn't serve any purpose in the story. What would make more sense is if you just have a group of people that you kind of under you can kind of understand how they're all together and you know. And, and, but then it, when there's one person, that's one thing, and another person, you know, and it, it just gets a bit much. It's like it is just like a checklist, and um, that that is a very real danger and something that does happen a lot, especially with corporations. When corporations get involved, then it becomes messy. And it, and it's like we're doing we're doing this because we feel we need to. We're doing this because we think this will make us look better. It's not about wanting more representation. It's about wanting to make the corporation look better. So that but that's more. And of a they problem want the, they want a bigger a broader demographic so they yes, get more they views wanna, and more yeah. money. But and this yeah. this goes with what Krypton's core was saying is like just make them gale and annoys him shows the struggle as a child or teen deal with being okay. So that's what they're doing right now with John and Superman, right? He's mm. a teenager essentially, and and yeah. it's not like the first issue is like, oh, I'm bi. No, it, it led up to this when he met uh, that one character. I can't remember his name, right? Um, and then I think this is a good good one, and then we can move on maybe. But so when they race band characters, people moan. When they create new characters that represents LGBT or different races or ethnicities, people moan. Comics are always a window to the world. Right. Yeah. The bounce Sorry, off what you said, Edward. Yeah, it's the corporations, but it's up to the artists to do it tactfully. And I think that's why Tom Taylor yeah. with with John and Superman is doing a really good job. Grant Morrison with uh, Apollo and Midnighter right now, and Superman the Authority not so much. You know, but mm. again, Grant Morrison is uh, an older writer. He's from a different generation, and you can totally tell yeah. that he's got a little bit of Mark Miller in him now. I think, or always has, <laughs> but it's uh, getting more uh, prevalent. Well, they, so. they even have people at 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 these companies like I I have a friend who works with somebody who is uh, paid by Netflix, who's an LGBTQ L, uh, community to, that their job is to make sure that there's enough uh, inclusion <clears throat> and enough uh, mm -hmm. and, and they look at the content and all that. So they, they've got mm -hmm. people that that are there to make sure. Um, well, when you're dealing with like a big corporation, you have to have that because there's so many moving parts but like if yeah. you're making an indie film or you're writing your own comic book that just comes organically and naturally right mm -hmm. and i think that's why it's like i said it's up to the artist to to make that not feel forced so but 
it uh the dc the cw stuff it got it got a little bit uh crazy to where i'd be watching and i would all of a sudden i'm like there it is you could see it coming yeah. you know what i mean and and i'm yeah. like okay there it was i was waiting but uh but you know like i said it, it even if it is forced it's a it's a good thing they're trying to they're trying to include people and we're all people we all love stories and and storytelling and it's like include everybody man what yeah. what does it hurt you know you, they, they you should, can change they, the channel you can you can yeah. not buy the comic you know whatever you know you know what they should have done they should have made uh finn and poe a couple in star wars <laughs> That's, they, they really should have done that. Yeah. They were hinting, I, 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 right? I, well, yeah, and, and they never they did the because romance, Disney, yeah. Dis, Disney chickened out. But that would have been that would, that would have made sense as far as the story is concerned. Instead, what did they do? They had a couple kiss in the background, a, a, a um, same sex couple kiss in the background of a scene. Yeah. They're, they're like, oh, here we go. They're, that's the first they chickened out. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a massive chick. And, and I would have, I know a lot of people probably would have got really upset about that, but it would have made more sense. Than Poe pining after uh, Ray the whole time, and it not really making any sense, and then it would have sorted out the whole. Um, what's the, what, what's the? No, it was Finn pining after Ray the whole time, and then the, the anyway. But it, it, and then it, the Rose thing with Finn, yeah. The Rose thing that was Rose, yeah, and it just didn't really work. That seems but, you know. That okay, so cool. I'm. They were, they were BSJ, still. W are powerful, Clint. They are running today's world. Hmm. So they're they're controlling DC Comics, they're controlling Netflix, they're controlling CW, they're controlling all media, right? Leroy, yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> so just do an evil laugh about that. <laughs> there you go, that's a better one. <laughs> but sh should we should we move on to another another topic? Uh, move away from this. I didn't think we we're going to spend so long on this, but we did. Yeah, uh, Letitia Wright, <laughs> she, yeah. she's been up to no good. And then says she hasn't. Has she though? <laughs> well, should, should we talk about about this? Let's a little? talk about it. So basically, there was uh, a, a while back she posted um, she, December. Yeah, it was back in December, wasn't it? She she posted or well, reposted a video that was done by um, I can't remember his name now, a, a, a British guy, I think, about uh, basically questioning the the vaccine and 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 all that, and then. She just used prayer, emo you know, prayer emoji, um, the prayer hands emoji, and she got into a lot of trouble about that. People got very upset naturally because it was spreading basically what is misinformation. If you watch that video, it's a, as as Don Cheadle called it, hot garbage, which, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> uh, but you know, like it, it's kind of she ended up leaving Twitter, reportedly fired her whole PR team. And she's currently filming uh, Black Panther 2, uh, Wakanda Forever. And the, now the report came from The Hollywood Reporter, uh, which is a pretty, you know, reliable source. Let, let, let's, let's be honest. And um, basically, they claim they, they are claiming that on set, she's been uh, like <laughs> spreading anti-vax views on the set of Black Panther 2. Uh, and then she then came out on social media and, and this the post she posted is so bizarre but in that post she she said that it's not true basically and then gave wrote a lot of scripture and quoted a lot of of the bible um what do you make of all this clint what i make of this is that she's religious and that's that's a perfectly normal i think she posted that stuff in uh here's the deal man if you've seen the social dilemma um and and i yeah. have a lot of religious family you know and and so if you watch the social <clears throat> dilemma you'll know that we're all living in our own uh, our own realities our social medias the algorithms they they do they send you stuff that they think you're gonna like to keep you engaged so mm -hmm. if she's a religious person the the idea of an anti-vax thing uh heading her way that's that doesn't uh that doesn't surprise me one bit and mm -hmm. and uh whether it's the algorithm or a crazy uncle to send it to her, that doesn't surprise me. And then she put posted it on social media in December, and then people freaked out. She's like, "Oh, but like everyone is, it, we're living in this weird bubble where we're trying to figure out what's going on." And there's a lot of people that are legit um, uneasy. There's, a, it just came out recently. A whole bunch of NBA pe people, uh, like, are uneasy about uh, and and actually pitch some decent arguments as to their unease i'm vaccinated i'm fully vaccinated like i'm i'm super vaccinated and i had the had the thing you know uh so but like 
but like this is a legit thing to certain people and if you're your community there's some Did people you go that, get some penicillin okay so anyway uh <laughs> uh so 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 what i'm what i'm getting at is is so they they uh <laughs> trouble in december and then i think people told her hey you want to be a Disney princess? You better cut it out. You know what I mean? And and mm. uh, and she got rid of her Twitter and all that. And I think I, I'm getting the impression that she maybe somebody just didn't like that she got away with that and didn't get get uh, canceled. And and uh, well, she did. Which she did, but she's still yeah. around. You know she, what I mean? She like like she was she chased off Twitter. Yeah, but she's still she's still around. She didn't get fired, and somebody didn't like that. I think. And uh, and the deal is, if you're a uh, if you're at work and somebody says, hey, did you get the vaccine yet? And you say, no, I'm still sketched out about that. But I but I've taken my covid tests today um, and uh, and I'm you know, I'm clean. And so it's OK for me to be at work. Uh, you know, yeah. like if if you say that, that could really quickly be twisted into, oh, she's spouting anti-vax thing. It could be uh -huh. her makeup person saying, D you, you, did you finally get vaccinated? No, I still don't trust it. Next thing you know, Hollywood reporters is is outing her for spouting anti-vaccine thing. No, that just could be her being uneasy about it and scared about it. There's a lot of people in the world that are that are freaked out about it. I think it's dumb because I'm fully vaccinated, but I, I'm not going to I'm not going to judge somebody for uh for feeling how they feel and it's none of my business how they feel so if she feels right. that way i think it's fine and i think what she does at work in her trailer or has a conversation with somebody and it gets twisted which she's had co-workers that have said that that was bs and she came out and said it's bs and the fact that she said all that and has people coming after her she she went out and put a bible verse up right again right after that it goes goes to show she's she's super religious and that's just what she believes and i don't i don't I don't see that she was out there preaching and doing press conferences, telling people no, not to get no. it. No, she's not doing that. If she was no. doing that, then go after her. I, I somebody, it's a to me, somebody's trying to see if she's made of wood and seeing if she floats is how I feel about it. But go ahead. That's that's interesting. Yeah. That... Wow. <laughs> like. Wow. It, it, you know, I, and I'm not calling her stupid. If somebody wants to be a moron, that's their business. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if somebody is scared, that's their business. Yeah, if somebody it, knows yeah. something, it's, it's their business too. I don't, I don't, I, I think it's kind of petty for the Hollywood reporter to come after her on this, unless she was actually publicly spouting some stuff. But, for, but I haven't seen any evidence of that. So, so you said that some of her cast, the um, crew members, cast and crew members said it was B. I haven't heard that. I, uh, I've, I've heard. yeah, I, I need to, I need to go back and research that more. I've, I've, yeah. uh, I was gotten into a, into a conversation with somebody online about that, and and they okay. said that I haven't verified that, but they said that, uh, that that was false. And I saw where she posted that that was false, uh, and and then posted a Bible scripture. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so. so uh, and, she, and what, what she said, what she said was, it saddens me to have to address the reports published by the Hollywood Reporter on October 6th, 2021. The, res the report spoke about me, my conduct on the set of Black Panther 2. I honestly assert this is completely untrue. Anyone who knows me or has worked with me knows that I work incredibly hard at my craft and my main focus is always to do work that's impactful and inspiring. Um, that has been and will continue to be my only focus. And then she quoted uh, Isaiah fifty four seventeen. She but, also fired her PR team. That was in yeah, yeah. that was in uh, December. That was in uh, December. Now that that is again that is allegedly that's not actually been confirmed. Yeah, they parted uh, ways. It was I think it was a North American team. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I, and I would understand. Like I think the thing that that whole um, event in her life would have been quite scary and i can understand like what she did was wrong like let's be honest like you she's got what over two million followers and she and she what she was doing was actually posting misinformation that video was full of rubbish it, it, it was it was full of misinformation it was full of fake science and 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 you've got to be dangerous about that the internet is is a very you know there are people out there that are very very susceptible and and um easily persuade persuaded and that sort of thing i mean letitia wright is a very she's becoming a very well known actress she's in the in, in the marvel cinematic universe so she actually i know people kind of get a bit annoyed about this but she does have a responsibility 
um, because people follow her, and she's a social. She's you know, and and, and she's someone that is is uh, plays a very aspiring character. Very uh, Shuri is is a very important character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Is going to be even more important, um, I think, after what happened with Chadwick Boseman, which is very sad. But I think her character is going to become actually a vital part of the MCU, which I think is why Disney didn't do anything. And, and Marvel didn't do anything because they know how important she is. And I think they obviously spoke to her and told her you can't do this because Disney has a very strict um, policy on this. <laughs> they do. They're, they're very, very strict. And if you say anything that doesn't, that you know, if you don't toe the company line, then you're out. Look at what happened with... Um, you're going to get uh, Gina carano yeah. Gina Carano. Yeah. And then Simu Lu stopped tweeting after that whole thing yeah, happened. Yeah, exactly. He tweeted and, maybe and, yeah. once after that. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like she got in a big trouble in December, managed to get through it without getting fired, had to had to like part ways with her team, had to delete her Twitter stuff. And then you think like months and months later, she's going to like be openly out spouting a whole bunch of anti uh, opposed to Disney's views. Uh, no, she's not going to do that. I feel like somebody somebody uh, I'm calling BS. I, it's just what I think. I don't know anything, mm. but I just it the human behavior doesn't add up like if if you survived the the great the great uh canceling of uh 2020 <laughs> december like are you really gonna go out there and start saying a bunch of stuff i feel like maybe uh, her words got twisted or somebody mm. just straight up making shit up because they don't they don't appreciate that she got away with that you know some of the best actors and actresses you know what some of them do they don't tweet out every single thought on twitter you know yeah can't they just be happy and focus on their career and, and be happy with their career. Like just because you can put out an opinion doesn't mean you have to. Right. And, and as you have yeah. more followers, you kind of have, like you were saying, you Edward, you have a responsibility. Hmm. Right. But I think the problem with her was she just kind of dug herself into a hole as well. I'm talking in she, general. She, it's, yeah. it's annoying. It's like, Every day, you oh no, okay, now what this person say, and what this person yeah, say. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. just, don't you have just a movie that up. you're making? Right? Aren't you writing a script? Aren't you? Don't you need to learn your lines? Like, aren't you developing this pro property? You signed three yeah. contracts. Focus on that. <laughs> yeah. Right? You're going to get canceled. That's a. <laughs> there's a lot of money. Like, yeah, look at that guy. Uh, yeah, it blows my mind. That, and that's why it's. I, yeah, that's why I ca I call bullshit. I I don't think I don't think she would be sacrificing that money, or she's a freaking idiot and she did. I don't know. That's the well, that's no, the other I, that's I, the other deal. It's a pretty firm denial. So I, yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure um, the Hollywood Reporter's uh, sources were were. I think you're probably right. It's maybe a disgruntled actor or cast member. They had to take the member. heat up. Minaj for talking about her cousin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I mean, it could be a hair person, a makeup person. It could be any, yeah, any, be any, any person uh, who maybe didn't like her, or it could just, be a journalist that just didn't like her and made it up. Yeah, <laughs> literally. It no, it's, that as it's well. the hair and makeup person from Jupiter's Legacy. They got yeah. fired and went to Disney, and then uh, she fired him for making bad beard. <laughs> but but think think about it like you're the angry makeup person from Jupiter's Legacy who who makes bad beards and you're like and you're and you're pissed you already are, are mad when you see this girl on set because because uh, you're like she said all that stuff she didn't get canceled and you're and you're bitter and you get a chip on your shoulder and then you go over and you're doing her makeup and she's talking to her her assistant and be like but well, so did you decide to get vaccinated after all and she's like no I still don't I still don't know if I want that in my body I just it, it makes me nervous I just I get a weird feeling about it meanwhile the makeup person is like that dirty rotten so and so you know like i do it and then she runs off and tells like she's having a conversation in her in her trailer or whatever and it's not it's not like she's out on a pulpit standing out there preaching to a to a, a crowd uh yeah. it could be any situation and it's just some scenario made up in my head but i mean it could be any say per thing like that it could be the assistant mm. to the to the the makeup person for jupiter's legacy uh, and then runs off it's like i got a scoop i'm gonna call the call a hollywood reporter and tell them all about it you know and uh next thing you know they twist this into something crazy i don't know I, oh! I just... yeah there's an infinite amount of scenarios that that something like that could get twisted and uh yeah so who knows who knows
I just or, have a, I have like an image of her going around the set handing out flyers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see what I mean? It's like it's ridiculous. No, everyone's, everyone's, yeah. like, everyone's like, oh fucking hell, Letitia, go away. <laughs> it's like if every, if anything, she she uh, she sent everyone on set a fruit basket that says "Go get vaccinated." You know yeah, what I mean? Like she, she's like the annoying person in, yeah. in like the cast and crew's WhatsApp chat. <laughs> like, hey, have, have you seen this? Have you seen this? Like they're just posting <laughs> links. <laughs> they end up getting banned like half an hour later. <laughs> but uh, honestly, I, th I think uh, that if that I could believe, to be honest, if it's like a, a, a private uh, um, WhatsApp chat. That they have, like the car, the cast and crew have, and she might have posted some links on there. Like I've got friends that do that. Um, you know, my my best man does that sometimes. Yeah, and uh, and and I'm a bit like, I'm just going to ignore that. <laughs> he's probably watching. If he's watching, I'm sorry, Alex, but you know, it gets a bit much sometimes. <laughs> I mean, I'm dude. I've got I've got uh, family and stuff that send send me things every once in a while where I'm like, oh. Okay, and I just, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. sometimes I, mean, I watch I mean, John, them. And some, yeah, John Oliver I, literally did a thing about that. Like the the last John Oliver episode was yeah. all about that. Man, it's, I live in the Texas of Canada. Okay, <laughs> so and we just had an election, and all the mis it, man, all the misinformation uh, out here is just, uh, yeah. Some of them, some of them are very crazy. And and like like over like I'm like this is I'm watching and I'd be like this is awesome and I'll send it to my buddy I'm like you gotta check this out dude what just check it out trust me and then some and then sometimes I'm like ah it's uncomfortable you know uh but yeah. hey dude don't don't try to Florida my Texas man don't don't like don't try to make us look like Florida he's got he's not even there I mean no he's gone <laughs> it is hey, is abortion legal in Canada like Texas you, ten years ago yes yeah, it is. You're trying to make us look yeah. like a, a Florida man. Eats and it's much better than that. Well, it's much better your, than Texas. All your utilities yeah. are, are state run, right? Yeah, from what I understand. Yeah. I'm not an expert mm -hmm. in utilities, but from what I understand, we sell <laughs> we sell electricity to other states because we because uh, because you yeah, got it because we got, got it. You got and all that solar. One, you're the one in the state that wanted to return the election results over, right? I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Maybe. No, there's a lot of similarities between Texas and Alberta, politically speaking. And uh -huh. that's what I was talking about. I wish we had the art scene here that you guys do over there. Yeah, that's mainly Austin. Austin's like the big oasis in the middle <clears> of, uh, <throat> of, uh, of Texas without, uh, we don't have Liam or Noel Gallagher, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's the big what? oasis. Uh, yeah, that's that, an that, oasis. That, that was a dumb yeah, joke. That was that a good joke. I liked it. Yeah. I like that joke. You I think it. Where, where where I'm from, it's just a bunch of uh, like people smoking cigarettes, going talking about uh, th philosophy and uh, going on strike. You know, that's that's yeah. that's all it is. The philosophy where I, where I of bread and cheese, right? But the philosophy of bread and cheese and uh, a little bit of uh, Jean Paul Sartre as well. You know, we talk about that here. It's very very Oasis is not from Canada, no. <laughs> Curtis, they're they're from Manchester. In the UK, and <laughs> Dan says, "Don't look back in anger, Clint." Oh, God, Every, everything that I've I've learned about France, I learned from the Highlander TV series because it was a co-production. <laughs> it's all philosophy about hey, bread and cheese. Hey, Edward, I figured out that my great great grandfather is from France. So oh. there you go. Our ah. grandpar grandparents you're, were from France. You, you're a true mongrel, aren't you? You've got, yeah. you've got, a lot, you've got lots. Um, I think I I don't yeah. have. I have a great great grandmother that is from France, and that's that's it. Everything then they, else is UK. Then they came down to uh, down to Louisiana, like a lot of the. Uh, that's why we got so much French culture in Louisiana. And then they made their way to Texas. So I thought that was interesting. So was nobody, Clint, to nobody but me. I was telling Clint <laughs> the other day that as uh, native Canadian, uh, Scottish, English, and German, and uh, my great 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 grandfather got kicked out of Scotland for stealing sheep. Or I hope at least it was stealing sheep, and then kicked out of England for womanizing, and then came over to Canada and met a nice native lady. Nice. <laughs> Sorry, it's such it's like such a nice story, James. At least he was like, a woman. <laughs> well, and then woman. and then my then my great great grandfather, actually no, and then my my mom married my dad, 
who was German. <laughs> well done. My grandfather's, my grandfather's na- uh, name is Otto. So there's a German, and they're they're not the good kind of Germans. So we don't talk to them. <laughs> Dude, you don't want to you don't want to mix that story up. Uh, you want to yeah. space. You don't be like, yeah, I got kicked out of Scotland for womanizing with sheep. That can get really weird. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you picked up my joke. One. I'm glad you picked up my joke when I said <laughs> it. I hope that's what it was for. Yes. Just took it to the next oh, level. Clint. Yes. Yeah, Kazakh said that in the chat. My mom married my dad. Wow. <laughs> 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 that was such a good line. Wow. 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 <laughs> You're a funny guy, Sally. We got so many of these. There's an old joke. I should even say this. Okay. There's an there's an old joke where the guy goes, "Out of all those sheep, you picked the ugliest one." All right, that's the punchline. All right, <laughs> let's move that... on. <laughs> Is that a Welsh joke? Sorry. Yeah, no, no. I'll, I'll move. I'll move on. That's <laughs> any people. Any <laughs> should we, should we start like talking about Bond? We did talk a bit about yes, Bond. Yes, was but... that enough? Get out. Yeah, there will uh, be spoilers, but it's okay because I already know the spoilers because a week before the movie came out, Leroy Kong messaged me and said, Hey, James, this is how Bond ends. And like, <laughs> Why the hell would you message me and tell me that? Honestly, like out of the blue, we weren't even talking about Bond. I hadn't talked to him for a few days. And he just messaged me and says, This is how Bond ends. You're going to be disappointed. Well, thanks. I would have liked to find that out from. Oh, it's just me now. Now, James, you've left and you just left me on my own because <laughs> Clint has gone. I don't know where he is. Dan Zig sends one pound seventy nine. Thank you so much, Dan. And uh, he says, "What's the latest with the planned strikes?" Ooh, that's actually a good question. That's a question that might that Clint, I think, might be best to an- best suited to answer. So uh, they uh, set a deadline for their negotiations. Yeah, and um, and it doesn't mean it. <sighs> Doesn't mean they're going to go on strike once that negotiation goes down, but uh, uh, it's just because they could. They the way they stated in their letter is like they could keep talking forever and ever and ever. But at least this gives them like um, a deadline so they can come up with a resolution. Yeah. So they don't because they're hoping they don't go on strike. Um, but that's where they're at right now. Yeah. Okay, so they're kind of they're still they're still like in the negotiation phase. Yeah, and I think it was yeah. like October. I think it's this Monday that mm. the deadline is up uh, for the IATSE, Clint. Uh, was uh-huh. it that letter they sent for the deadline? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was. And, it uh, was Monday. Monday was the yeah. deadline. The, this past Monday or was. It Monday yeah, I think it was up? this past Monday. Oh. And it, I'm pretty sure it, I was listening to another uh, popular, uh, very popular show that I watch, and they kept saying this Monday, this Monday, we're going to find out it, this Monday. Does it rhyme with Blampia? It might. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Here. yeah it might it might but yeah they were saying now yeah, this this monday we're gonna find out and it also uh and there was also a joke because uh, i think they were talking about mandalorian uh starting shooting uh mm. season three and they're like yeah it'd be funny if they have to start and then stop immediately um it would be crazy can, can, can yeah, we just can we just address leroy's last uh comment it's, because it's he thinks this monday he thinks, yeah. the, the deadline okay. The deadline is this Monday. Oh, ah, yeah. well, what the hell do I know? And then the stream streamers and cable platforms are scrambling to uh, uh, to come up with content and stuff just in case it, it does happen. So, and uh, Leroy James doesn't hate you, okay? <laughs> let's, just, let's just make that uh, clear, James. I don't hate you forever, Leroy. Just give me some time. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, yeah. Don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> For what movie though? What what movie can he spoil next? I'm I'm so gonna do it to you, James. I'm, I'm so gonna piss you off, and then you're, you're never gonna come on the show Just again. Just spill the beans about Dune. You've seen that one, or sorry, is is y'all say is it, June? Is it, is it Dune or June? June. It's Dune. It's June. It's June. Just like Houston, where uh, CB3 lives, is a uh, Houston to some people. A Houston. lot of people. Say, no, no, Houston. 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 <laughs> Kazakh says James hates everything versus Clint loves everything. We've figured out what Clint doesn't like. He does not like DC fandom. That's the that's the thing he could not give a shit about. 
<laughs> maybe maybe a Jupiter's Legacy reboot. <laughs> <He's> like, <"Hey." laughs> that monsters, what do they have in the bad guys of, of uh, Jupiter's Legacy on the next time around? I don't even care. <laughs> yeah, I, I know the first the DC fandom two years ago, I was stoked. I had my buddy over, um, my buddy Dirk that I used to do Black Shirt Podcast with. We ordered pizza. We like, ma- I put up big screens. We made a big deal out of this thing. And then, uh, yeah, and then last year I didn't even watch it. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't. I thought the big one was last year. I could have sworn it was last year, not the not the year before. But uh, years have been going quite slowly and quickly at the same time. Mm-hmm. Thanks, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, I got, let's talk. I got a memory. I got a memory. We had our one year anniversary of friends on Facebook this week, Edward. A what? We had our one-year anniversary of friends on Facebook. Oh week. my god! Oh my! Can you god. believe it's been a year? Actually, I can't. That's it's, it's, so. Th- yeah. This is this is the moment when you, you mess you messaged me going, D- "Do you know who this person is <laughs> that, that's claiming that all his scoops, are, uh, all my scoops are his scoops, or all my articles are his articles?" I was like, "No, I wrote all those articles." So t- yeah. <laughs> I don't know who Joshua Munn. We caught you. We caught you, Joshua Munn. <laughs> we tried to do that's it with so you guys. Oh, that's so weird. Uh, Spooky Bats asks me a question. What's this? Uh, if if you do, I may have to hurt you. Lol. What's this about? You don't spoiling stuff for me. If you ruin June. Oh, if I ruin June. Oh dear. No, I, I wouldn't dare. Don't worry, Spooky Bats. I wouldn't. I wouldn't dare. I know what. I know what the wrath of James ensues, and uh, I do not want to be a part of that. A part of that. In the way of that. Because <laughs> I'm so right. mean. Super, super mean. <laughs> super mean. I'm the best right, at I what think... I do, and what I do isn't very nice. Mm. Oh, Bobby says something interesting. Watch Animal yeah. Crossing direct today. Yes, I did. Uh, I, I'm a massive, massive Animal Crossing fan. Uh, I've got t shirts. Do I have one? No. I've got my Spider Man. I, told, one on you, now, I but... told you to order Animal yeah. Crossing. So Bobby I've got I've, I, I, I've got an Animal Crossing T-shirt, but I've also got the new Switch OLED, and it is brilliant. I don't have it here in on on. I have another. I have another thing though. Do you want to see it? Do you want to see it? It's it's the iPad Mini. Yeah. <laughs> Come back. Bring me back. <laughs> this is my show, James. You can't you can't, you can't get, you can't take me off my show. Um, yeah, so I, ha- I haven't actually watched the Animal Crossing uh, direct yet, but um, I will do. I'm very excited. I've heard that they're, they're doing a a, a free it's, it's um, free to play patch. Uh, I'm, I'm f- losing my words, but yeah, it's uh, the and uh, Kazakh says the Switch show led is brilliant, and it is literally brilliant. You, you are right; it is literally brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant, characters. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. I love it. I'm so happy I got it, and I've sold all my other switches. And James is very pissed off about that because he was like, "Why, why can't you just send the other ones to me?" But um, I'm yeah. s- I'm super oh, excited sorry. about all the movies coming out. <laughs> just, <laughs> Kill it, I don't get excited it. about the switch, but I'm excited about the, about all the movies coming out. Uh, sure, maybe maybe I should get a switch, and I'll be excited too. Well, should, new- should we talk about should we talk about one movie that came out? The big movie that came out. Are, we, are, we, are you talking about... Uh, no Time to Die. Are you talking about Lamb? Lamb? Lamb that came out on at... October 8th? I haven't seen that one yet. I really want to see that. Uh, Do you know... I, didn't, I don't I know what you're talking about. Uh, it's got uh, uh, Numi Rapace. Is that how you say Oh, name? that one. Is that about the... That's a horror film, isn't it? No, it's a weird film. It's like a lamb. There's like a lamb. You see the, the, <laughs> you see the trailer. They're like some there's a litter of lambs and they end up like raising one like it's a human being and then all of a sudden the lambs get pissed and start coming after them or something i don't know it looks really bizarre but it looks awesome like if you look up that you get bored look up the trailer for lamb i saw it at the theater and uh and i i said man i have to see that movie plus i love her she's great i've seen her in a whole bunch of past is brilliant yeah. yeah she's really good she's not in enough stuff name your past she, no, she'll she's, be in more stuff yeah she's good we got Halloween Kills today, The Last Duel today. Next week, we got Dune. The following week, we got Last Night in Soho. It's like all this great stuff just mm. keeps coming out, coming out, and coming out. 
So, so the, the, let's talk uh, more about the switch. I didn't mean to change the subject. <laughs> no, I didn't want. To, I didn't want to talk about the switch. I wanted to talk about No Time to Die, and I wanted to know, Clint, what you oh, thought that? about it. Yeah, because we didn't get to talk about it. Um, I absolutely loved it. I I really enjoyed the movie. It was an action packed movie. Um, it was uh, there was feeling and drama and emotion and and fun and uh, i felt that the villain was a little bit meh uh yeah and he's a great actor but it just i think it was is just he, written that way huh is he a great actor well he was when he he is when he plays freddie mercury uh well, he but, literally got the oscar for lip syncing yeah. rami malik is a brilliant friggin actor he's an international treasure if you haven't watched mr robot then you can't say a damn thing Mr. Robot's fantastic series. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. But I, I mean, he did a good job at being a Bond villain. I just think he didn't have a, a, a fantastic I, I, you script know what? to I deal think with. He's, I think he's one of the weakest Bond villains in a long time. Javier yeah. Bardem is a great actor. No Country for Old Men. And, he wasn't and a that great good in Bond. Bond. He, oh, he wasn't that off. good in Bond. No, he was so good in Bond. No, come on, what are you talking about? He's, he's good, so but not good really that, that good. I don't Look. think he, I don't think he had a very good script uh, uh, for himself to work with. I thought the rest of the story was good. I just, I and mean, played you, it on the actor. You could have stuck anybody in that spot, and it, it's not like you're gonna all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Marlon Brando couldn't have done better. I mean, I'm just like. It was the part. It was the part. One thing I never understood what his plan was. Was it to literally kill everybody? That's the big thing. Is that that uh, uh, that that nobody really knows what the point of the plan was. It's like, hey, how do how do we conclude uh, Daniel Craig's run uh, at Bond? And we'll write the story around that, and then uh, and throw in a bunch of action. But we're gonna leave the the evil plot a little bit vague. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I I was watching it, and then at the end, I was thinking, "What was his plan?" It's like a whole DNA thing, and he's like, "I'm I'm going I'm I, I think I want to do what you do, but just be more effective." It's like well, Bond doesn't go around killing everybody. <laughs> it's like I, I just I didn't get it. I really yeah. didn't get that. But this plan was stupid. The villain was stupid. But then again, this film wasn't about its villain. Right. It, it was about Bond. And that's why I loved this movie, because it's the first film since, as I said before, um, on Her Majesty's Secret Service, which turn which makes Bond an actual human being. He's not a womanizing twat in this movie at all, and actually, probably the most gorgeous Bond girls of all time are in this film in Anna de Armas and um, Leah Seydoux, uh, um, and and Lashana Lynch as well. You know, you, you've got. Like in, in any in any other Bond movie, there would have been a sex scene. There is like one mild sex scene with Lea Sidhu, but you know that's that's that she's also the first Bond girl to be in more than one Bond movie, um, yeah. which is which is great, and I think she's brilliant. Uh, <laughs> he literally has a license to kill. Yeah, Bond does. <laughs> um, <laughs> but hey, can I ask you a question? Yeah, the, all the Daniel Craig movies. Do you remember what happens in them? Like, uh, I remember what happened in Sp in sorry Skyfall and Casino Royale. I don't remember sure anything that happens in them. Like they're forgettable. Quantum, Quantum of Solace, no. Uh, Spectre, no. But the other two, yeah. Um, I distinctly remember the end of Skyfall, which I thought was really good. Home Alone, um, yeah. But I I remember what happened in the Brosnan films and a few Sean Connery what? films. Yeah. Do you remember, I, I okay? Remember, do you remember what happens in Tomorrow Never Dies? Like, yeah, be honest. Unfortunately. Oh yeah, yeah. So. Do, die another day. You remember what happens in that, or do you, do you just remember? Cars? I didn't say they were. Look, they were good for their time, but I remember they remember. They were not. They were, they were not good. Die another day is terrible, that, brother. That feels, I saw them in the theater. You probably didn't see them in the theater. Yes, I did. I used to go every year. I would see them in the cinema uh, for my birth. Well, not every year. Whenever they came out, I'd see them in, my, in the cinema for my birthday. Okay. That was my birthday treat. Brosnan's so, yeah. my favorite Bond, but the studios messed that up towards the end. But I don't... And I think Daniel Craig is a good Bond. Uh, I love the opening Casino Rail, but I don't remember anything from the movies. That's why I'm not really interested in No Time to Die. It's just... Just... 
the I don't know the plots were like very convoluted, and I just I don't remember they're not rememberable for me. Well, the the old the old uh, bonds were uh, episodic, like 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 mm-hmm. they were they were individual missions, and and the Daniel Craig stuff <laughs> is uh, is the uh, BCU. It's the Bond cinematic universe, and they all dovetail together and is throughout his career instead yeah. of it being like a like an tv show episode you know what i mean like the old ones worth they'd be like 007 we need you to come go on a mission blah 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 as in a hollowed out volcano and then they'd send him off and uh engage and then and like he'd go off and (laughs) and, uh he'd go off and and do his thing and then and then he'd have champagne and go to bed with somebody in the middle of the ocean on a life raft you know and then and then it was like the next movie and uh there was a whole bunch of those uh where this one it's like you see him at the beginning and uh and and i'm uh, I'm stealing a rant from uh, I got to give him props, but uh, uh, Robert Meyer Burnett was going off about this, and I go, he's freaking absolutely right. I was like, this is like the life of Daniel Craig's Bond, not not a uh, Bond mission. So, uh, so that's kind of interesting. But uh, I really, I think we've got to do a YouTube video where, like, I like you're Bond and I'm M, and you come into the room and just like, oh, Bond, it's you. Yes, we've got a mission for you. So no hollowed out volcano. <laughs> and then you're just like, yeah, all right. Need you to go and save the world it's once some, again. Some Very... guy, some chap with a cut on his eye and a cat. And he's in a hollowed out volcano. Jolly <laughs> good. Do? Jolly Cheerio. good. What are you going to go and kill him? Cheerio, <laughs> Wheaties, Waste Krispies. Engage. <laughs> and have sexual intercourse with many women. Goodbye. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's, that's what it was. <laughs> well, it's, well, like I like Daniel Craig. It's just different than the other ones. I'm not. I don't. There's no. Yeah, there's no rules. There's no, I'm not there's saying no they're rules. bad. I'm just they're not yeah. rememberable. Like, the first I don't, one. I don't the first remember. one was. I remember seeing Casino Royale and being like, "Hell yeah!" I was. Oh, I, I was going. I remember. I remember parkour at the beginning of Casino Royale, and okay. I think I'll that's the all, one all where the like the buildings. I think that's the one. That, like the buildings in Italy fell down in the canal. Is that? Yeah. Is that Casino? Yeah, that's what I remember in the movies. I mean, how much do you remember about uh, all all of the Bourne films, besides maybe the first one? <laughs> yeah, it's actually not a, a lot. Pretty, not, not a lot. A lot it's because it's the same thing. That's what they're what, like. What okay. do you remember of the Mission Impossible films? Let's Nothing. Be honest. I actually I remember a lot of the Mission Impossible films. Yeah. Really? Nothing. Remember, I remember. Remember the... what happens in MI4, in MI3. Uh, MI3? I remember one of them has yeah. a, mon- a monkey's JJ paw. Abrams. He gets uh, Tom Cruise gets thrown into the side of a car on a bridge, and then MI2 was uh, uh, John Woo. Yeah. MI1 was Brian De Palma. MI4. Yeah, you, you're just saying names right now. You're just going. Like, I can't remember... go through the whole franchise because I, I can rem... NCIS this crap or CSI this crap, like you would believe. <laughs> I remember lasers. There's lasers in a vault, and they're like, "Oh, we're with doing this." With and... Lasers on their head. Yeah, and then yeah. and then I remember uh, maybe a clock and maybe something filling up with water, and then having to diffuse to diffuse I'm, something I, before I remember, you drown. I remember, the, I remember the knots list. That's one thing I remember. <laughs> All right, that's from the first Mission Impossible, isn't it? That's a really good movie, actually. The first one, Brian De Palma, good film. Yeah, and the Brad Bird one is really good, and Christopher McQuarrie is an awesome director. The the, the McQuarrie ones and Brad Bird ones, I think, are the best ones. Brian De Palma, I, w- I would put his in. I, I did not like MI3. I thought MI3 was crap, and the John Woo one is crap. terrible. Yeah, the 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 John Woo one is awful. Literally, that's the reason Do Gray Scott did not do Wolverine for that movie, which is the yep. stupidest <laughs> decision ever. I mean, where's he now? He's in the he's on a CW show, isn't he? He's in Batwoman. Well done. Your career's really progressed, Do Gray. It's a shame. It's hey, a shame. He would have Jackman, so that's okay. Yeah, yeah, we did. But you know, I, I understand what you mean with the Daniel Craig Bond movies. They are a bit. I think all Bond movies are very convoluted. It's literally like, yeah, and you're right. It's literally like there's a volcano. It's empty. There's we think there's there's some chap in it that's doing bad things. Go go there and stop it. So okay, all right, we'll do that. And then we have a load of crap to get to that point. But I will say, No Time to Die is the first Bond movie in a long time since actually probably Casino Royale that I've watched and I've been like, there is this, the, the, the script as far as Bond is concerned and what happens to him is very tight. 
Um, it's it makes sense. The character development in it is, I think, quite interesting. And I actually think this is the first Bond movie that I've watched where I actually think Bond is quite likable because normally he is. You, you don't really like him. You think he's, you know. Well, D- Daniel Craig is emo Bond. He's dealing with so many emotions that he's tortured. He's got to- so much torture. Did, uh, my Bond, uh, Roger Moore, he didn't care. He was like, he's having a great time. He's partying and and pulling off missions and doing stuff to where it's like, uh, uh, which means he's a complete sociopath, uh, psychopath. You know what I mean? He's like killing people and doesn't care. And hello, ladies. Uh, and, and all that. He doesn't have time for feelings like Daniel Craig Bond. Daniel Craig is like so tortured. It's just so tough killing people all the time. You know, what about uh, that? Let's see. My wife calls him Pouty Bond. Yeah, pouts. He, he pouts a lot, doesn't he? He does pout a lot. Double O tears. <laughs> but uh, you know, the, the, I mean, uh, you, you, we, if you've what have you? I suppose it's been out long enough that we can ruin the end. We don't even. Oh, oh. I already had the end ruined for me a week before the movie yeah. came out. Who did that? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, Bond dies. What? <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> I, I uh, went to the bathroom at that part. I didn't even know. <laughs> you just were like, oh, he's not at the end. Call it, Sanchez, or you'll get a knuckle supper. I thought that was very brave to, to do that. And it made, it made does sense. Does he really, though? Because you said you were going to yeah. explain this to me. Yeah, he, he, he gets blown up. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, it was brave. <laughs> I thought it was brave. And, and, and um, it makes sense as well for the character. But why why did they bestow this honor upon Daniel Craig and not any other previous bonds? I'll, you may tell you. Yeah, please. There's some nanobots in this thing that that they have a they have. No, a... I, I mean I mean why did the production why did they choose out of all the bonds <laughs> to bestow the honor of death to Daniel? Because Craig? because of nanobots. Why? I don't know. Maybe, maybe they just really liked. They just because he touched. He, he touched um, Lea Sidu, and Lea Sidu had nanobots on her skin, and then <laughs> and then he proceeds to. Uh, I'm going to spoil the whole thing. <laughs> Why uh, did they choose Daniel Craig to finally kill Bond? Why not prob- Connery? Probably, Why not prob- Lazenby? Yeah. Because they're probably going to reboot the franchise, and no, no, and uh, and yeah, they weren't but... thinking of they weren't thinking of how to reboot <clears throat> franchises back in the old days. So but they also, just said. Can I also explain why? Because I know why. No, because I want to watch it. I want to watch it. Well, no, but no, the reason they've done this is because this is the first time um, since actually. Uh, well, it's, it's the first time ever that they've actually had a story that goes through each and every one of the Bond movies that he's in. So there's a start, there's a middle, and there's an end. You can you can completely discard Quantum of Solace. That doesn't really matter. But from Casino Royale all the way through to um, No Time to Die, there is a progression. There are character development, a story that's being told. It's, it's the, the Craig Bond story. The BCU. Yeah, and 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 it it just it just made sense uh, as far as the story is concerned to have him die the way he did because you know I mean I don't want to spoil too much uh, the he, Bond dies is like the thing that's everyone's talking about on the internet so if you haven't seen that then you're probably living in a cave somewhere with no internet or a hollowed out volcano <laughs> <a> hollowed out volcano. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. The other ones were episodic. So it's like, okay, it's just another mission. We can have a different guy be Bond in this mission. But this one, he came out of retirement. He's at the end of his at the end of the line. And uh, and that's why they, they did that yeah. for him and not the others. Because the other ones, they were just episodic. Hmm. A lot of people have speculated that it could also be because this is like Barbara this will be Barbara Broccoli's last one and Michael Wilson. That now that that's not the case because um, Amazon sold Amazon bought um, MGM, so they now Amazon owns the Bond franchise. They have specifically said that they're keeping on Broccoli and Wilson as producers. So whatever happens next, they will be the two producers that will be rebooting the Bond franchise. Which is also why I don't think Tom Hardy's going to be Bond because Tom Hardy I think is a bit too old. 
at 44 years old. I think they'll be looking for someone slightly younger. And also, I don't think they're going to. I don't think this actor is going to be known at all. Like Daniel Craig wasn't really well known when he was cast as James Bond. He was in the same. Henry Cavill. Sun. It won't be Henry Cavill. It won't. It won't be all these people on these lists. It won't. It just won't You're be any. You're fired. <laughs> You're fired. I agree with you on that. It won't. It won't be James North. Wow. What can I say? Also, I know you're not going to think this. I know you probably a lot of you are going to take this the wrong way. I don't think Henry Cavill's a good enough actor. Uh, I, I I agree I, with you on that. I agree. I agree I, with you. I, I think. I, wow. I'm being serious as well. I think Craig has put it into another level. Um, before before Craig, I think yes, Henry Cavill would have been actually quite a good Bond and probably would have been yeah he would have been very good actually but i think craig is by far the best actor to have ever played james bond you can't go from craig to cavill even though i love Ka i think he looked great i think he was great in the man from uncle i really really like I, I really like him i think he's a really good actor but i think he's a good actor i think daniel craig is actually a fantastic actor he's a brilliant actor and um and I think there's there's a big difference between the two of them. I think it'd be a bit of a down. I think you'd be going down a level. Um, and said it will be EastEnders own Danny Dyer. Oh, don't, please don't let it be Danny Dyer. It will never be Danny Dyer. But um, yeah, I It'll think I think, I think they're going to bring Pierce Brosnan back <laughs> and make awesome Bond movies. Well, that was the whole. They're that gonna, was the whole thing. And they're going to bring back Sean Connery, Connery with CGI, and they're going to make Sean Connery a villain. That's what it's going to be. Yeah, it'll it'll happen in 2042, but that's what's going to happen. Because <clears throat> at the moment, the, the the list the list of actors that's being I mean Idris Elba's on that list. Um, so what is it? Idris Elba, um, Sam Hewen, James Norton, Tom Hardy is like the favorite all over the place. But I think he's wrong. I think he's, I think he'd be interesting, but I don't. I just don't think he's young enough. Pure surprise. Uh, Pierce Brosnan isn't on any lists. Uh, Michael <laughs> Michael Fassbender. Oh, he'd be great. There'd be a he, Bridger, he, There's a Bridgerton guy too. Yeah, reg again. The same problem with Reggae John Page. I don't think he's a good enough actor to play Bond. I think I think now you you need someone that that is really is is really going to take the franchise into a new place after Daniel Craig, and I don't think any of these actors will. I mean, maybe Sam Hewen, but. Then again, I mean, I don't think he's that good either. My my mum loves him because she loves Outlander, which is the series he, he's in. Uh, Mark Wahlberg will be the next one. <laughs> hey, cool. Ben Affleck is going to be the next Bond. Ben, Aff ben Affleck would look, yeah, he would look <laughs> a good Bond. He has a good look. But as we know from The Last Jewel, he can't do an English accent, so he just, he'll just do it American. <clears throat> Ray um, How about Matt Damon? About Matt Damon, what to shall I mean? Oh God, no, please no. Um, yeah, and Dan agrees with me. It'll be an unknown. The role is a star-making role. You don't need a marquee name in the role. Plus, it's cheaper and easier to get them to sign for a multi-picture deal. Completely agree with you. And then they'll go for Tom Holland. <laughs> <laughs> I think they should make get somebody that's a little more light-hearted, <clears throat> hearted and funnier. I think they should make them goofy like they used to be in the eighties. Oh, Vin, Vin, Diesel. Vin, Diesel. Vin Diesel would be great. Family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We have that guy as Bond. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that'll never work. Unfortunately, I'd love it. I'd love to be Bond, but no. Okay. Uh, Adam Adam Driver would be a pretty dark Bond if you if you're talking about going lighter. Uh, I don't think he'd want to do it lighter. I think he'd want he's to go. He's pretty funny, actually. Dark. He's a pretty funny guy. He's pretty. He is pretty funny. Yeah, but I think he just want. She's want, weird. <laughs> she's, it's, yeah, it'd be a really weird Bond, wouldn't it? But um, I, I, I think all these people. I mean, my favorite is Luke Evans. I think I, I think he would be so good, and he's such a good actor. If you if you know him, for he's, he was in um, he's been in loads of stuff. He was in The Hobbit. Uh, he was in uh, most recently that that he was in a show that's on on Amazon at the moment with uh, Nicole Kidman, where he's really good in it. And um, Ricky it's Gervais. Names. <laughs> it's it's one of those names that like I hear Luke Evans and I'm just like, oh, is that like, uh, is that like uh, uh, a Thor brother? Can't think of. Is no, that a Hemsworth? No, no, no. 
you know, or is that like a Charlie Hunnam? Like he's been lumped into those kind of actors, like Charlie Hunnam uh, and stuff. Me, so. Luke, Luke Evans is 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 another level of actor to Charlie Hunnam. Charlie Hunnam is fucking awful. I'm sorry to, about swearing, but I think he's <laughs> terrible. Uh, no, Luke, I'm not Luke, shooting on you. Luke Evans was in Dracula and told that was like the, and he was in Fast and Furious as well. He's in Fast and Furious Six and Beauty and the Beast. But he's he's someone that I think is. You, you can just tell he's like another level of actor. He's not been in like massive stuff. He's 42. He is. Yeah, he is a bit old. Yeah, 42. I mean, again, the, the, the favorite at the moment seems to be Tom Hardy and he's 44. So, yeah. And Freddie says Charlie Hunnam's great. No, you're wrong, Freddie. Charlie Hunnam, he's from fucking Newcastle. He can't even do his own accent. And he's, he's just, he's awful. If you've... <laughs> If you, if you've watched what was the film he was in was it Arthur King Arthur or something he's ah uh, he's just bad he's just a bad actor Eric Banner Freddie says <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Spooky Bats agrees with me says I hated Charlie Hunnam and Sons of Anarchy that show was horrible I, I just don't think he's very good he was in he's was not a good actor the, that's why when I hear Luke Evans I just lump him in with like that kind of <clears throat> no Joel yeah I was in that. Joel Kinnaman was in that kind of uh, uh, group for me for a while. And then I saw him in, um, oh, what the hell did I see him in? I saw him something before the Suicide Squad, and he was really good in it. I was impressed. So, yeah, jo Joel Kinnaman's done him. So he's done himself quite a few favors, I think, with the Suicide Squad, playing Captain Boomerang. Oh, he's, he's, he was really good no, in not, uh, not Captain Altered, Boomerang. Altered, Altered Carbon. He was great. In that Altered was Altered Carbon was the show that he was in. Um, yeah. I was trying to think. I was getting him mixed up with the Australian actor. Um, that's kind of another one of those. That's, that's also in Suicide Squad. Oh, what's his name? Oh, um, Again, Jay Courtney. One of Jay, who Jay Courtney before the Suicide Squad and, no. and the, he's lumped in with Charlie Hunnam, Hunnam, however you say his name, and all those other Hunnam, actors. Charlie Hunnam. Yeah. For, yeah, I know Freddie likes the Gentleman. I haven't watched the Gentleman. Apparently, he is good. good. In, it is good. But yeah, he's actually, Charlie Hunnam is, yeah. Is, is good in that. He is good. Actually, you know what? He was in Vikings, right? No, Charlie Hunnam. Charlie Charlie Hunnam. I don't think it was. No, in that Vikings. was another guy. Yeah, but that's the thing. There's so many of these actors that you could. They could literally become. They look, they're, 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 and they all have similar names, like Luke, Charlie, like Travis Fimmel. Hemsworth. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It is true. Um, but Charlie then, Hunnam. Yeah, Hunnam James Hunnam <laughs> Hunnam it's, it's a weird name is that, is that Spooky Bats? <laughs> no that was Mando <laughs> yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch no just kidding he could be a villain uh, the, one, of, one of the names that keeps on coming up is um, is the other one is Tom Hiddleston uh, but yeah um, it would be he would be good, I think, but I'll say again, I think he might be a better villain than than, than Bond. I, honestly, I don't, I don't. I think it's going to be really difficult to cast this next Bond. They're going to get some unknown, like 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 you said, you know. Yeah, yeah. They're going to get some guy called Edward Lauder. And then yeah, Altered Dreams will if, be made a reality. If they hear my accent, they might call me. I'm like, woo. <laughs> No, I think you should play Hello, M. You, should, you M? should definitely play M. And then <laughs> I'll come into the room and you just be like, there's, a, there's an empty volcano. We want you to go over and blow it up. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> okay. Why are you still here? Devil O, where have you been? Double O seven. I liked that whole that whole like double O seven thing with Lashana Lynch. Yeah, that was cool. I thought that was cool. Well, I mean, they've never talked about retiring. A, a, like, they don't really talk about that. You know what I mean? Somebody will get killed in a mission or, an episode or whatever, but like, th he retired. Yeah, so that they got another double O. It's a rank. It's not a person. It's a rank. So it's like. It's, I it's wanted to know what the number was that they gave him because they give him another number. They reinstate him as a double O, but he never actually says what. Yeah, I, he is. I noticed that too. And I was like, what, what is he? Double <coughs> O eight? Yeah, I was thinking, is it 008? And they were like, we can't say that. It just doesn't sound as cool. <laughs> so, yeah, well, I think that's probably why. And what was she when she said, I'd like to, uh, uh, spoiler, yeah. I'd like to uh, request that you we make him, him as, yeah, as, as 007. 007. Yeah, what, what did, then what did she become? 006? <laughs> 009, if he was 008 before. 007.2.0. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Double O O. Maybe he was double O O. Yeah, Kazakh says double O zero. That double O zero cool. sounds cool. That sounds cool. Double O zero. <laughs> uh, Boring. Okay. So, well, is what there else any, we got? I don't. I think that's everything. That's everything on the docket that we had to talk about. Doom James, Patrol is amazing. Anything? Go watch it. Yeah. Titans is great. Go watch it. Uh, Good game is great. Go watch it. <laughs> uh, hashtag uh, Ian McKellen for 007. <laughs> Patrick Stewart. <laughs> Patrick Stewart. <laughs> no, Patrick Stewart is M and Ian McKellen is Bond. Yes, that, that's that, it. That would be really good. That's the magic they would combo. Just, they would just giggle and hug each other the whole movie. <laughs> yeah. that, I, I'd pay I'd pay admission to see that, to be honest with you. That would be so good. <laughs> <laughs> they're like zimmer frames <laughs> it's like it's like q goes here you go bond your new zimmer frame it's full of interesting gadgets like a kettle <laughs> i think that'd be great i think that'd be that's such a good that's such a good skit ej bass made ej bass made a good meme the other day where he had uh q from the bond series talking to captain picard because i don't know if you know there's q and next generation it was really yeah. good i wish i had it hmm. freddie says alex pettifer is bond oh bloody hell not him and then he'll be like penny earl gray engage money mm. money penny yeah Ray wins no. you know who should be bond <clears throat> no don't say Mwah. matt um <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway enough about our balls I think Dan Ziggs is obsessed with EastEnders. What, Matt, um, Matt Berry? Yes. The name's Bond. Jan's Bond. <laughs> That'd be good. M. Edward <laughs> Not Q getting mixed up with... Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Clint. Oh, dear. Right. I think... Oh, yeah. I swear that I bicep is not Photoshopped. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> and I think on that bombshell, we should end the show. Did you say on that Bond shell? On that Bond shell. Yes, <laughs> I... Yeah. All right. right. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Well, well, maybe I won't be here next to uh, next week, but maybe you two will. We'll be yeah. here. I'm Ron Burgundy. Yeah. Like, yeah. share, subscribe, you actually, guys. You might actually do a, a 24 hour stream or a 12 hour stream. Uh, yeah. I've been thinking about that. So, all right. Where can we reach you, Clint? You can find me at the OG Clint Baker at Twitter and Instagram. And you can also find me at youtube.com slash Clint Baker channel. Clint. In your face. Yes. In your face. There it is. Are you really the OG Clint Baker? Was there never like a Clint Baker before you? There are others, but not as great. You must have been so there's... pissed off when you saw that, like Clint Baker was taken. Well, there's a couple, and and, and there's one that's a jazz musician. There's one that's a country singer that's younger than I am. Then there's one that's a, a photographer. There's a whole bunch of weird, creative Clint Bakers out there. You should start a group on Facebook, the Clint Baker group. Yeah, we'll do acapella stuff, like a barbershop <clears throat> yeah. thing. It'll be awesome. Yeah, it'll um, be fun. Yeah, so I, I snatched that up. I've tried to get the official Clint Baker, the real Clint Baker, and then I go, I'm going gangster with this. The OG Clint Baker. So there, there we go. It's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> what were you before? Uh, I was Clint Ridlin because I was in the band uh, Ridlin Kids. Man. Yeah, so Clint Ridlin before, and then I, I switched it up. And I went ahead and changed all my socials to that. So mm. Good, good. Yes, Branding. Sir. Branding is important. Branding. Marlon Branding. Marlon Branding is important. The OG Clint Baker. Go there now. Uh, this this idiot you can find at Small Screen Co. and EJ Lauder. I, I was I was Edward Lauder before, at Edward Lauder, but I changed it to EJ Lauder because I think it sounds cooler. <laughs> and uh, subscribe. Subscribe to Small Screen. Uh, give us a like. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a share. Give us a bell. Quack that, no quack that notification bell. Give us a break. Give you can a... find me at 42cut.com and Small Screen Co. and Gigosity Mag. I think and, yours uh, is big... the best. Yours is the best one. Big shout out 
big shout out to uh, our patrons. Danzig 1979. Sean Soundtracks. Bobby. Sax God. <laughs> Patreon.com slash small screen co. And go read those small screen articles if you haven't if you haven't read any. There's a bunch of good stuff. They don't we don't always get to all of the articles on the show. So go go check that stuff out. No, oh, thank you, Clint. Absolutely. Also, don't, don't feel pressured, you know, to, to to go. It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. Right. Are we done? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Danzig. Oh, is oh. this where I'm supposed to say, what is all this about? And he says, uh, shut up, I asked the question. Yeah.